Hello, hello, and welcome. It's another one of our Slant Alpha adventures. Something a little bit different tonight for those of you who did not catch this the first time around. Yours truly has finally had his arm twisted enough times to start S3 training on the VATSIM network. S3 training, for those of you who don't know, uh, I am currently an S2 rated controller in the Washington ARTCC, which is a controller that is certified to work delivery, ground, and tower positions, and I am in the process of the S3 training, which is approach and departure control. So it's my first radar position. With me is the air traffic manager of the Washington ARTCC, Jared West. Jared, welcome back. Thank you. And it's been so long since we did this the last time. Uh, John is no longer the training administrator of the Washington ARTCC. He's now the deputy air traffic manager. So he got a promotion. I did. That's because of uh, our last training session. I got promotion. Was so successful that they were just like, this guy's moving up in the world. So That's right. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you, John, for coming back and, and doing this with us again. Uh, I know that we've talked about some ideas for kind of accelerating this training. I know that the fact that it's been so long is going to probably um, require us to go over some things again, which is a little unfortunate, but it'll be a good uh, introduction and review for the folks who are watching on the stream. Those of you who are with us on the stream, I'll take a moment just to say a, a few hellos here. Uh, DYL961, I have a feeling I know who that is. Uh, DIY Jedi is also here. That's one of my favorite Twitch usernames, DIY Jedi. And our friend STW222 is with us as well. So hi, guys. Those of you who are watching who have not yet said hello into the stream, just be advised that this is going to be a not too chat interactive, if you will. This is a training process that I'm going to be working with these two instructors for, uh, for the bulk of the evening and... Um, because I'm going to need to focus on what they're telling me, and I'm going to need to focus on learning these new skills and practicing them and getting the keystrokes sequences uh, ingrained into my head. So I probably won't have the additional bandwidth to pay attention to what's going on in the chat. So there's that message across the bottom of the screen to just let you guys know I'm not being rude. Uh, I'm, I'm streaming this with, this is not normally something that's streamed, by the way. This training process is normally done, you know, kind of privately. I'm kind of taking maybe a, a bit of a bold step by showing this to the public of, of how one fumbles through and learns this, this, this process of being a uh, radar controller on the VATSIM network. And uh, I expect that John and Jared are going to probably have to give me 10,000 reminders of things that I have forgotten to do, and that's going to be part of the process. So in the process of reminding me 10,000 times for things that I didn't do, the uh, last thing I'm going to be looking at is the uh, is the stream chat. So uh, again, I do apologize for that, guys, but I hope that you enjoy the show, and uh, we can probably circle back at the end once the lesson's over and, and say some thank yous and catch up and with with some of the messages and such. But But again, it won't be the most interactive stream that you've ever seen in your life, but hopefully you'll enjoy it anyway. All right, uh, Jared and John, I turn it over to you to let uh, me know what is happening next. <laughs> well, thank you, Rob. Uh, so welcome to your second session. Um, tonight is going to be the death file. We're going to take you through about 800 aircraft coming through Chesapeake. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just kidding, I promise. Well, me. there is a death file, but as I said <laughs> off stream, and I will repeat it for those of, of uh, those of you who are watching, I said at this point right now, any death, any file for me is going to be a death file. So. <laughs> So the second session is kind of, obviously, we're not going to go over a lot of the material that we did before. If you have questions, we'll talk about those. But we try to jump right into uh, the actual sweatbox session. That's where you get most of your practical right. applications and knowledge. So, Learn by doing, uh, right. Yeah, so based on last week's, or sorry, sorry, that was a Freudian slip. Based on the last <laughs> training session, uh, did you have any questions from us that popped up or anything you want to kind of talk about or address? No, not too, not too many questions. I will ask for one more reminder. I know we, we, we kind of went over the a reminder of the function keys. And, you know, I know that F3 is to start a track. F4 is to drop a track. F5 is to assign a new hard altitude. Um, F9 is to assign a squat code. I am reminded, though, of, of the, um, the limited data block. And that, that was kind of a tool that we were using to, um, to kind of have a self reminder on the screen of who's on your frequency and who's not on your frequency. And I just don't yep. remember how to expand and, and collapse those blocks. Uh, hit F1. And then oh, sorry, what uh, is it? aircraft select. So F1 aircraft select. F1. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Um, I, th I think as, that, well, well, real quick as, as kind of, um, 
And it just kind of jogged my memory when you said that. Uh, so one of the things that I think we we try to always encourage the students is kind of zoom out a little bit, get a better idea of what's coming your way from from the streams, and look at the aircraft and those that are coming to you. It's it's not as much on Sweatbox because you know we don't do a lot of Mont Vernon and the intros to to speak. But uh, you know when the aircraft are not coming to you, I leave them unselected and minimize data tag. And when they are coming to you, I in um, expand the data tag. So it's gotcha. a way that you can kind of get a situational awareness of what's going on and also plan for your approach. Gotcha. Makes sense. Um, all right. That's good. And then just again, for the benefit of the viewers, this is the Chesapeake sector of Potomac consolidated TRACON, which uh, you guys would refer to as Potomac departure or Potomac approach. Um, or in this case, it's, uh, it's the, yeah, the Chesapeake sector is the sector that controls the area around BWI Airport, Baltimore. So, all right, en uh, enough intros. I think we're ready to press forward into whatever it is that you guys want to do to me. Okay, uh, Jared, did you want to talk about anything? Or... Nope, I'm good. All righty. All right, Rob. Um, so we're going to do east tonight. East okay. is, uh, at the end of the day, it's, it's not much different than west. It's conceptually still the same. Okay. We want to keep that box that extended uh, pattern out, right? Downwind, base, final. Um, okay. And then with the east, you are kind of condensed a little bit compared to the west uh, west flow. So you always want to keep an eye, definitely an eye on the speed and get those speeds down as quickly as you can. That's going to help you. When you only have one aircraft, not a big deal. Uh, if you have four or five or six coming into the Tracon, you need to start slowing them down. Gotcha. And so east flow at BWI is landing on one zero and departing on, one, on the one fives. Correct. Okay. Uh, beyond that, let's just get it going, unless you want to bring up anything before we go. Uh, so, ADIS information, uh, just alpha. generically alpha. Okay. Yeah, it'd be alpha, Sounds it good. won't change. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then, oh, and then, do I have a center online? Do I have, who, who? what other sectors are online in our scenario? Uh, well, you do have DC center on right now. Okay. And then you've got you, yourself, you got Deal, OJ, uh, Harrisburg and Philadelphia approach are online. You've oh got two God. departures at Mount Vernon and no Baltimore Tower, sadly. So no Baltimore Tower. So that means I'm handling all of BWI top down as well. All right. Got it. Yep. Well, a bunch. It, except for those that are at the, at the runway, we're just going to pretend that you have a ground on and they've given them clearance and taxi up okay. to, to one five, uh, right. Or wherever. Um, gotcha. but you, you don't have a tower on, but no, no top down. Cause otherwise <laughs> the situation okay. doesn't start that way. So gotcha. Just, okay. But, but plenty of yeah. other sectors online, as far as people that I'm going to need to hand off to. Correct. Okay. I assume that's Here. part of the lesson tonight. It is. Yeah. <laughs> that's the okay. Fun part. I can see this coming, right? <laughs> you know us very well. Right? Prophetic. <laughs> All right. Uh, if you don't already have it up, I would probably have, up uh, the Potomac, um, SOP. Uh, yeah, good call. Let me get that in front of me. And uh, underneath uh, in page, and I know Jared, you have it memorized. <laughs> oh God. Page ten, uh, you've got your departures out of Baltimore, and where they go. Okay, so uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Potomac consolidated. Yeah, there it is. Page 10. Now, page 10, I think, covers mostly stuff that I put in these little reminder notes. So I think I'm okay. covered on those. Good. Um, and the only thing that you would need page 10 for to be the airspace restrictions. Uh, so where your ceiling is in each of those sectors. Uh, okay, got it. Um, so, and you know what? Oddly enough, I put in reminders for the arrivals, but I didn't put in reminders for the departures. So let me just look over those real quick. So if they're going... Okay, so Conley's 140, Fixit's 140, if anybody's on the Fixit, which they probably won't be. Paleo, we give them a climb and maintain 140 and radar vector then out to Paleo. Swan is 140, radar vector to Swan. And then Terps is 160 if they're going to Jerry's and McRae and 170 if they're going to the rest. But they're climbing via Sid, but yeah, okay. um, as far as the altitudes go. Okay, got it, I think. Oh. <laughs> All right, um, so we're East Flow. Uh, ground's on, but tower's not on. Okay. Um, and me any, any other questions? Mm, no. Okay. Cool. Uh, then let's get it going. 
Right. Your control. My control or L. Okay, he's on the deal. So I'm looking uh, at this. Can you prime up for me if you don't mind? Oh, yep, yeah, I can do that. All right, so I see a guy coming in on the deal. Deal is the sanity of the deal three. Oh, and, and DCA is, is north or south flow? Uh, north. Okay. Yeah, there's zero four zero out four. Okay. Oh, and what's the latest information at DCA? Uh, alpha. Okay. Easy for you. Oh my God, you guys are too easy. <laughs> you have to wait until the until the uh, OTS then. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> then you can say that. Gotcha. All right, so I'm trying to click on that. Tar oh, it's not V stars, is it? I actually have to accept. <laughs> I actually have to do more than just click on him. Okay, F3. There we are. All right, and this guy up here is on the Trish. Department Departure getting getting Southwest 1002, holding short runway 15 right, ready to go. Southwest 1002, Potomac Departure. Wind 0 nine or 0 at Niner, runway 15 right, clear for takeoff. Drop the wind, runway 15 right, clear for takeoff, Southwest 1002. Potomac getting Envoy 4418, 15,000. Envoy 4418. Potomac approach. <laughs> Good evening. <laughs> uh, he descends via the deal three arrival, Washington landing north. What we'll descend via the deal, Washington landing north, on boy 4418. Okay, so he's F5070. Zero, zero. And um, give those guys the Baltimore altimeter. Click on him. Oh, and yeah, okay, gotcha. Baltimore altimeter, which is 3021. All right. Potomac, uh, Wisconsin, third. Sorry, what were you saying? <laughs> Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> Potomac approach, Wisconsin, 3873, 1 2000, information alpha. Wisconsin, 3873, Potomac approach, good evening. Descend via the Trish 3 arrival. Expect ILS runway 10 approach. We'll descend via the Trish, and yeah, I'll expect ILS runway 10, Wisconsin, 3873. And Potomac Southwest 1002 passing through 2000. Southwest 1002, Potomac departure, radar contact. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and, and then stuff. Okay. Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait a minute. Hold on one second. Hold on one second. That's why I said Wait. I told you you'd like this guy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, where is he going? Uh,. He's going to daily, radar vectors daily, of daily, yeah. I guess, which is somewhere on my screen, I would imagine. Yeah. What the heck so is we that? Uh, <laughs> well, FF daily. I know it's the south. Yeah. If okay, you, if south. You do dot fine, then DA yeah, I will. I got him. I see, I see where he's headed, but. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, you're going to try and crash him right into that envoy, I think. Yeah. Um, well, <laughs> so you, you want to put him through kind of the Conley gate, right? So. If you vector him a little bit south within your airspace, you can have him climb, right? And then have him go through daily. Okay, so he's stopping Close at, to the, yeah, the daily. daily he's stopping course. at 4,000. Uh, Envoy is going down to 7,000. So I could I could give him 6,000. Ooh, which one? Envoy? It's, no, the southwest. Well, how far away are they from each other right now? Uh, I, don't, I don't know. 30 miles. Double click and drag. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's 23 miles from Conley. He's 37 miles from Conley. So he, that, yeah, so he's fine. Yeah. So you All can right. climb Southwest 1002 to his door ceiling airspace. Okay. Which is what down there is 14, I think. Uh, no. What is it? That are below 14. Yeah. Okay. You had it right. All right. So uh, Southwest 1002, 
climb and maintain 14,000. Turn right heading 190. Proceed direct Conley when able. Oh, I'm sorry, he's he's vectored. To, he's yeah, so daily. You yeah. want to have him vector so, a little yeah. bit further south and go out through the Conley gate, right? So okay. have him come down and then. So uh, okay. One, so so, so I gave him. Little... Yeah, yeah, I gave him kind of direct Conley, more or less. Yeah. But... So from where he's at, 180 is fine. Okay. Gotcha. And then uh, F5, 140. Boom. Well, you don't want to you don't want to change his cruise altitude if he's climbing. Oh shit! Yeah, you're right. What was it? Oh, I don't remember. Uh, uh, Thirty-five thousand. <laughs> I'll just put that at double. No, what was right. he doing? Where's he going? Uh, Thirty-four thousand is fine. Thirty-four. Okay. Yeah, that's right. I forgot that I don't do that on. Yeah, and you don't do temp altitudes unless you're going to hold them at the end. You're, then that way you clear it later. Yeah. But you don't want to send that on to the next controller with a temp altitude. Right. Got it. Okay, so Southwest just needs the handoff at that point. Yep. Um, now, here comes the, the $10 million question in Potomac. Yep. Who do I hand off to? Well, let's see. What is he at now? He's at 77. Um, by the time he gets to the border, is he still going to be in Tracon airspace, or is he going to straight up to uh, center? Well, this is where you have to figure out, like... Where Mount where Mount Vernon owns, and where because you, you're you're going to put them out through kind of a, the air the sector that I always think of as Nottingham, right? OTT. Okay, gotcha. And that's at or below nineteen. Okay, so he's really he's going to go to that that um, that eastern DCA sector. All right, so how do mm -hmm. I figure out where which which one is which one's the border sector? <laughs> Jared, you want to pause it real quick? Yeah, I was just about to ask. Yeah, so this is where. You know, again, this is the fun part, right? He's trying to figure this stuff out. But if you mm -hmm. look inside the total list of con uh, positions, which is yeah. page uh, seven, right? So go down to Mount Vernon, and you've got... It's page seven, okay. Yeah. Starting at OJ, which is the beginning of Mount Vernon. The first departure oh, you yeah, have yeah, yeah. Yeah, is but... Fuki and then Tyson. Right. Mm -hmm. And then Grant. Right. So those Fluky Tyson and Grant. First okay. thing you got to do is in your brain figure out are they online right now? Yeah. F, Y, and K. Uh, and F and Y are. Okay. So Fluky and Tyson are on. Now, if you scroll down, sorry, sorry, scroll up to where it lists all the different sectors are. Yep. Um, look at the first one. So it's Fluky. If you click Fluky, it takes you to the sector. Okay, gotcha. And then scroll down to page 191, and that shows you those sectors. Okay. With their gotcha. airspace, right? Yeah, although now i got to compare that to my screen and figure out what marking is where. Um, P-56 is on there. You know where that is. Oh, works. yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, so I can see he's got... He, he looks like his sector's a little bit west of DCA. He's west, yeah. Okay. He's west. And if he had guy goes on the Terps... They would go to them too but this guy is not so he's uh, that's what you have to keep going down to the next one which is okay uh sorry tyson okay tyson i see okay and okay he's Unwired he underlines airspace. underlay excuse me yeah the top one right because they all the highest he's got is fourteen thousand. yeah so, then he, so this must be Krant because it's Krant's the eastern eastern half correct and there you go. Okay. All right. And then and, just, I don't see Krant. Well, Krant might be that DCAI approach up there, 1985. Or no. Hold on one sec. Now I got to back up there. Man, you guys. You <laughs> stumped me on the first one. The thing is, we stump people continuously with this one. So yeah. <laughs> once, you, once you learn how to figure it out real quick, then... It'll make it easier for you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. So Krant is DCIK approach. Who I don't see on. So now who inherits Krant when Krant's not on? Does that go to OJ then, which is J? 
Let's go to page 147. 147, okay. Uh, natural aircraft on frequency. Just pause for just a moment. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so Krant, yeah. Well, hold on. Krant doesn't get inherited by anybody. <laughs> so how could he not be on? Here's the reason we're updating our SOPs. Oh. So, o <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, oh, so OJ actually um, so, right, wraps so up into OJ, really. That, so, that so I had it correct, and you were like, well, look it up. And I'm like, wait a minute. So yeah. you're just pointing me to a resource that turns me from the right answer into the wrong answer. Okay, I got you. That Thanks, very guys. bottom one right now should say OJ in 119.85, yeah. <laughs> All right. it, it will say OJ soon. <laughs> yes, fair enough. All right, good. Now, uh, OJ was which one again? OJ was... Uh, da -da 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 -da. Alpha Bravo. 1985. J approach. J approach. Okay, gotcha. Bro J, right? Yep. Okay, makes sense. And then so hand him off. Oh, that's the one I didn't remember. How to how to hand somebody off. Um. Oh yeah, you just said it. Oh no, it's one J. So on the radar, do it to thirty two, and then use OJ's frequency. Do it the thirty-two. Yeah, yeah, because okay. that's we're in sweat box. That's okay. I don't understand. I just I can't pick up handoffs from the positions that I have like simulated. Oh, okay. So if gotcha. you just flash it to me on thirty-two, then at least I can pick up pick up your handoff. Okay. And I don't remember how to do that now. All right, remind me how to do that because I'm. So, with so goodbye, Sorry. right? Oh, it's a oh, it's F four. Oh, okay. So, all right, gotcha. Thirty two. No, it's F four. Then it's F four. Then thirty two, and then click on them. Okay, and then to condense that. Well, I won't condense the data block just yet because he's still on my frequency. Okay. All right. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> so those these, these eastern guys are all going to end up on going to OJ. All right, I think I'm ready. Okay, all right. You got two guys flashing. Yeah, well, I see them. Um, <laughs> Southwest 1002, contact Potomac departure 119.85. We'll see you. Departure 119.85, good answer. Southwest right, 1002. I'm going to condense that block. All right, now, and so Wisconsin I've already got. Envoy, I've already got. Um, Wisconsin was going. Oh, 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 and what's the uh, scratch pad? What's the scratch pad function key? Uh, it's like insert. insert, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. And he's going uh, I10, right? For uh, for Wisconsin for, that I gave. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. I10. The, scr the scratch pads are really good. I mean, th yes, they are in the SOP, but it's important to know that unless there's a bunch of other controllers on, especially final, you can. Do a scratch pads for yourself. Just clear them before they move on to somebody else. Yeah, but I I want that in his data block just so I can glance up there at him and go, yeah, okay, yeah, I've already yeah. given him an approach, so I don't. Yep. He's he's fine, you know. It's I it's do. it's it's the he's fine kind of thing. Hundred percent. Yeah, and I and yeah. I do that in V stars too, right? It's yeah, like four more keys, but it's the same concept, and and it really is easier to keep track of all that stuff. Yep. Okay. Good evening, American 427. American 427, Potomac Approach. Good evening. Descend via the, I'm correct, correction, cross Baltimore at and maintain 10,250 knots. Washington Landing North. I will cross Baltimore via wire one and at and maintain 10,000 speed 250 knots. American 427. American 427, Baltimore altimeter 30. Two one. Three zero two one four twenty seven. All right, so F five one zero zero bonk. Um and then I think this guy was next. Uh, come on, come on. There he is. 
And then that guy's like way out of my airspace, so I'll, I'll get to him when I get to him. <laughs> but which one? The Southwest. 478, uh, you, and lower left. Up, yeah, Mount Vernon will generally hand those to you relatively quick just because that whole little airspace doesn't give you a lot of work with. Yeah, that's true. As soon as they hit Raven, they're like, boom. Uh-huh. They're like, yeah, yeah, okay, gotcha. So okay. Those, on, those coming down on the, uh, on the Raven, you want to get those sooner if you can. Gotcha. Potomac, good evening, Wisconsin, 123-15,000, information alpha. Wisconsin, 123, Potomac approach, good evening. Descend via the MIDI-2 arrival. Uh, expect ILS runway 10 approach, Baltimore altimeter 3021. But descend via the Trish. Uh... Oh, sorry about that. It was descended by the MIDI and uh, expect dial us for me 10, Wisconsin 123. Sorry, I was looking at American 427 when it's I said okay. it. And then he's got the ILS. And, and I must not have done that right. Insert I 10. That guy. No, I'm not doing that right, apparently. Uh, what are you trying to do? The results did. Insert I ten. Look at Mister. I never will go above tower P. Yeah, for some reason it's not letting me do the scratch pad, but I'm probably not doing it right. If you right click it and do set scratch pad. Oh, uh, okay. The only thing I don't like about that is like it's like four thousand options. Oh, I know. I know. <laughs> it's annoying. All right. Boy, I got lots of people flashing at me. <laughs> All right. So now, real quick, pause it for a second, Derek. Yep. Uh, so Envoy 4418 is in the Mount Vernon. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I should have handed him off. Yeah. Um, you want to do that from pretty much, deal, because deal's... Sorry. Pr- pretty much once he's out of any conflict, I should probably just uh-huh. go ahead and send yeah. him. Yeah. yeah, so between billet and deal, it's about 22 miles. Right. right. So okay. I shorten that. I do half. And if you, the, in my brain, it's just right past that eastern shore part. Um, mm-hmm. Right before you get into the bay. Like, that's where I start to hand off to Mount Vernon. Gotcha. All right. Uh, so that is. And under the same reason, because Mount Vernon doesn't have a ton of time to talk to them. So nope. get them on their frequency kind of helps them out. Okay. But I'm still doing 32 for him tonight, for tonight, right? Uh, for tonight, yeah. Just on the right but... area. And now, okay. who over voice do you hand off to? Um, that's that's same. There's, but there's two there's two approaches on. Oh shoot. Uh huh. Where's D right. go? Well, I guess you probably should keep it paused for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. That's why we call it pause and learn. No worries. Yes, yes, yes. Um. <laughs> this right. is. This is this is the fun part, right? Yeah. And it's it's I I've all these years I've controlled it. I still have the SOP up and look at it because you know I, I, sometimes you forget. It's yeah. a lot well, to remember. And, so. and of course, on a normal night, this probably doesn't matter. But no. on an event night, you really need to know this. No, and honestly, it's true. But you at the most we see sometimes they'll split one of the one of the sectors. But for the most part, you'll see three people on. Occasionally you see some James River, but for the most okay. part, you're not going to have four Mont Vernon on. Gotcha. Okay. Well, I have the funny thing is in my cheat sheet, I do have this actually. So I hand off to <laughs> Sue sector, but now I got to okay. figure out who's covering Sue at this point. Is 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 approach on DCA DS? Okay. So now I got to go back to that silly flow chart that's wrong anyway. Um, <laughs> okay, one, because it's going to tell you to, that it rolls up to OJ. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, hold on. But I want to. But I want to understand it. You know. Yeah. Sure. Uh, what page was that on? One seventy something. One seventy one. No. no. So from what I've been told is they don't usually open NSU and Deal at the same time, uh, because one is working just Deal and the other one's working the Clipper and the Skills. And you kind of need one controller to merge both of those streams uh, oh. before it gets to finals. Uh, so at least my experience on that sim, uh, we don't usually we don't usually split that. So we usually just combine Ensu into Deal. And there's another place where this this combining positions is wrong. 
<laughs> because <laughs> okay, my answer would be deal. <laughs> and I know it tells you to go to OJ. But <laughs> But it's deal. Yeah. But it's deal. Yeah. Okay. Well I keep I keep finding the wrong merge charts though. Which page am I? That page one's one forty seven. One forty seven. See I said one seventy four. Yeah, but but that's... The, even aside from that merge, it's a, you have to know and see where that airspace is and who owns it and what altitudes they own right. at. Right. Yeah. And that's more important really than to see once you know who you would hand off to, then you can find out where the con where the combinations are. Gotcha. So deal south starts at one seventy six and deal okay. north is at one seventy five. Okay, one seventy six and one seventy five. Yeah. For those of you playing along at home. <laughs> We should have instead of a P fifty six, we should have page number for the S R P. Yeah. Page number count. Page well, number no, count, tonight yeah. it's gonna be pause count. How many times did he have to make you pause? <laughs> um BCDC.org it is available. Right. <laughs> we'll be drunk by then, but it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Once okay, so I see one seventy five. And okay, so that's deal south. Yeah, we're in north now, so that's Mount Vernon north. Oh, okay, hold on. Well, then which page am I supposed to be looking at? Well, 75. It's just yeah. the header is on the bottom of 174. Yeah. Oh, okay, gotcha. Deal. Okay, so deal south. Oh, okay, gotcha. So deal south is the diagram that's on 175, and so that's where... So where Envoy's crossing in just east of Andrews... Fifty to a yeah, five thousand to ten thousand. That looks like. So yeah, this would be right. This would be deal south. Yeah. So if you look at that little crosshair, you see where um, Nottingham is. It's in that five thousand to twelve thousand. Well, it's in the five thousand to twelve thousand. Yeah. Okay, so he's a little further. Kind of go north uh, east from that. You see a little uh, intersection symbol. The X. Oh, okay. Right. That's deal. Okay. So he's. 5,000 only? Is that that little chunk that says 5,000 only? Uh, no, it's the 9,000 to 6,000. I'm looking at the wrong thing. Uh, page 175 of the document. Uh, the uh, the very north northern sector of deal. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm looking at the document below that. Okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Oh, yeah, this that's is... the south. That's south, if, if my right was in south. Okay, so deal north. Oh, okay, right. So we're in north flow, so that's... Yep. Okay, gotcha. Okay, so this... So, yeah, so, all right, so this... The ceiling of this these sectors is all basically 9,000 there. Uh, Yeah, essentially, yeah. In, on that eastern front of it, yeah. Okay, so then what... So whose is it above 9,000? So go to 180... I think it's 184. Uh, I lied. It's 185. 187. <laughs> See? That's that like, was close. Three counters right there. Yeah. Okay, shots. so that is so, in Sue if it's above 10,000. But they would yeah. talk to him and then hand him straight to deal because they needed to send him. <laughs> yeah, okay. So really, honestly, we're probably, what, doing a, uh, a point out to in Sue and then handing the deal? Yeah, so that's there's a, that's another reason that we don't really like open them both because there's not really a reason. Yeah, okay, for Ansu to be there makes sense. Okay, but anyway, so then that's that yeah. that gets us back to where we were, which was hand handing off to Ansu or, or well, okay, so straight down to deal. <laughs> yeah, basically straight down to deal. <laughs> okay, and then that takes us back to okay, well, who's handling deal? Gosh. That's actually deal. Oh, so, deal is actually on. Yeah. And this is something that if you're going to do a, a, a cheat sheet, yeah. <laughs> this is something that you want to, I, I, for the standard arrivals, right? Leave, you know, the other things that are non standard, sometimes you got to go figure them out. But if you want to do a cheat sheet, which is what I did, yeah. um, is on the standard arrival at altitude, who do I hand off to if they're online? 
Gotcha. And if they're not, then you know who the next person would be. The the combined, and we can take we can walk you through that. If you yeah, gotcha. That. So I so somehow I came up with, and I don't know it, when I made this, or maybe I was reading another page that that didn't have the proper context. But for some reason, I just have all these going to ensue on that my little my little cheat sheet. But well, obviously that's would, wrong. Yeah, because like Jared said, you would think that they would, right? Because it's yeah. you know a ten thousand in that sector, but like Jared said, we don't really open up into by itself. Yeah. Uh, and so it would all go to deal for these. And guys. if he was dropping like a stone, he would, he would oh, bypass yeah. and Sue's anyway. He would, he, would, yeah. he would go to deal. Okay. All right. Yeah. So, and so deals, uh, 2835. Uh, so that would be one D, but I'm going to hand him the three, two anyway. Right. Yep. So F four 32. Yeah. And goodbye. Oops. This is not my control. Maybe I've already done that. Oh, I already did that. And then yeah. the question is, who am I handing him to verbally? 128.35. Okay. Just as a little aside, if you look at the actual chart from deal, if you know, for a North Flow, they go deal, yuck, Terza, high tech, all that. So between deal and yuck, it's still 10,000, right? Which is why, you know, in the real world, they probably, if they needed to, whatever, they may do that. But generally speaking, they're not going to start descending until after they make that slight turn to the south to go to Terza. Okay. And so that's, you know, that's another kind of area of confusion. But generally speaking, we're never going to open up into, we'll just leave deal. So just hand everything off to deal that are on the deal. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, that makes more sense, uh, I guess. Uh, certainly. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 at, least, at least it gives mm -hmm. me a, um, a topic to go through this SOP again and probably right. make a little map of how the sectors connect and what combines to what and probably put that all on one nice page for myself so that i'll have that something that helped me is just go through the diagrams in vrc mm -hmm. and you can turn as you're looking at them you can turn them off and on oh and so that yeah way it actually point. shows you on the video map kind of where um where everything is where I don't those know trumps if, are yeah that's yeah and i think you can turn i don't know if um i haven't seen the new one but um i think you can turn the sids and stars on too so you can kind of visualize where they are yes yeah well so, um Kyle's done like a complete like revamp of that file. Like you can turn everything off, off and on individually, which is great. Right. Exactly. So just okay. spending some time playing around in, in there, you know, not connected is helping yeah, out a lot. Gotcha. Too, so. Gotcha. Excellent. Appreciate that. Okay. I think I'm, uh, I think I'm back up to speed ish. Okay. So I'm, let's sure, reset. I'm sure I'll mess up the next one. <laughs> well, before we unpause, since we did talk a little bit there, let's reset and kind of go through your scan. So take okay. us through your scan, starting with uh, the guys coming in through the uh, southeast. Okay. Uh, Wisconsin, he's 15 going to 4. Okay. He's on the ILS to, to 10. Okay. Uh, the Delta 774 is uh oh, did i talk to him nope not yet okay well then then but what is he he's uh he's on the midi okay so he'll get um he'll get via the arrival to uh four also yep and wait a minute that's wisconsin 123 they're both on the midi so they're they're, they're in trail on the midi um The Wisconsin. Now, Go ahead. Real quick, what's looking at those two? That's where you could potentially have some speed issues, right? So right now, what what do you see as the ground speed for Wisconsin one twenty three? Um, am I showing a ground speed? Uh, yeah, it cycles through. You'll see it as a three the, digit number that comes is in that after the three thirty. Yep. And the guy behind's doing three twenty. So right now, there's okay. no issue. Nope. So right now, you check that little box in your brain and say, "Yep, it's fine." Okay. Now I can move on. Gotcha. Um, Good. Envoy forty four eighteen. You still have to hand off, right? Envoys. Yeah, I've got given given the frequency, and I haven't collapsed his uh, his box yet, so I know I'm still have him. Correct. Um, and then as I kind of cycle up to, well, there's a southwest down there that I haven't accept handoff yet, which I'll get to in a moment. Um, Wisconsin thirty eight seventy three is eleven two down to four. Um, and I've already given him the ILS 10, so he's got a track to the west before I can start worrying about turning him in for his approach. Okay. And and he's showing a ground speed of 300 knots. 
American 427 behind him. He's a DCA, so he's not going to be in conflict with Wisconsin as long as they don't run each other over in the air. Um, yep. So, uh, and he's 12 going down to 10, so he's fine. Okay, perfect. And okay. any other concerns in the air? Um, not that are immediately obvious to me, but I'm sure something will happen. Well, there's there's one that's about to enter the airspace from the west that I haven't haven't seen yet. Yep. But... And then a little bit further out near Madonna, you zoom uh, Medina, out a little bit. Yeah, so, uh, yep, I've yeah. got another one that's flashing. And at then me. go up near Lancaster. Oh, I didn't even Roll see up. that guy. Yeah, scroll a little bit further. Yeah, uh, then there's another another one up there that yeah. I did not see, but I see him now. And then you have someone over Dupont, north of the bay. North of the bay, Dupont. Uh huh. Yep. I don't see that guy's ten thousand feet. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. South of the one that's already flashing. Yep. Okay. That guy's gonna get spicy. It's gonna get spicy. Okay. <laughs> Well, uh, so I'm going to accept this one first. Yep. Uh, oh, look at that. Potomac, good evening. Delta 770 for 15,000 information alpha. Delta 774, Potomac approach. Descend via the MIDI 2. Expect ILS runway one zero approach, Baltimore altimeter three zero two one. Midi ILS one zero approach, Delta seven seventy four. All right, F five zero forty, and bonk. All right, so then who's next? That's up to you. Yeah, well, I know, but I'm. <laughs> I'm deer in the headlights on it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You want to pause it or? Uh, no, I'm good, I think, for the okay. moment. Uh, tell me good evening, Envoy 4455, 10,000. 2319! Envoy 4455, Potomac approach. Good evening, descend via the Church 3 arrival. Right over. Ultimate Round 3021. Expect ILS runway 10 approach. Expect ILS run with Remy 10, continue descend by the church. Envoy 4455. Okay, and let me try this again. Insert I 10. Okay, that, that one took. It just hit aircraft select. Yep. Yeah, and that one took. Uh, this probably is the next one I need to talk to. Oh, did you delete that one that I said needed a handoff to deal? Yeah, we just moved have... on. Okay. Come oh, departure. This... Good evening, Brickyard forty four sixty nine ten thousand. See, when I click on these guys, I got to get in the habit of like seeing what they're doing. <laughs> 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 He's DCA two. Okay. All right. Deposit now, you're going to pause this one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so this is one I don't think we we kind of covered yet. Which was this is a, a DCA departure that comes through Chesapeake. Yep. Yep. Um, so he is ten thousand going to one eight zero. He's going to Rochester. Um. Well, there's two at, ways you can do this, right? He's at ten. Okay. Is he's going through what gate? Uh, Jerry's. Jerry's. That's, as you know, like you said, it's Rochester to the north, right? Okay. What is your, if you look on page 10, you have an IFR departures out of Baltimore. Okay. And do you see Jerry's anywhere in that chart where the departure route fix is? Well, it's right there. So I've got 120 to 170 there. So I can give him climb. I can give him climb and maintain one seven thousand, right? Yep, you can. Okay. And then who would you hand off to at that point? Let's let's assume he uh, continues his climb up and. Well, at that point, he's leaving the tracon. He goes to center. Okay. Yeah. Which center though? Uh oh yeah. There's more than one. 
Um, <laughs> <laughs> so up there, it's actually New York, I think, right? It is, yeah. Yeah. Now it's all it's all dependent on how well they climb, right? Well, <laughs> so, true. You know, if he starts slowing down, he is he's in an CRJ, so you never know. If he starts slowing down that that ascent. Right, and it's say he's it's like sixteen thousand. He's at that border for New York. Mm -hmm. You kind of have to gauge it, right? So sixteen thousand, yeah, definitely want to head it off if he's climbing. If he's holding at fifteen thousand, and you don't get to him, he you you keep him, right? If you don't get to him and ask him, hey, what are you doing? You got to figure out if he's going to continue climbing, if something's wrong or whatever. You don't want to just hand it off to New York. So, assuming he's climbing. Okay. At a good rate, you hand him off to New York when it gets close to that border area, right? Gotcha. Your or your your airspace ceiling. Uh, if he's not climbing, obviously you don't hand him off, and you got to figure out what's going on. Okay. If he needs vectors or you know whatever, and then once he's on course and climbing at a good rate, then you hand him off to New York. Okay, so I guess I'm not understanding. So if he leaves the if he leaves the Potomac Tracon to the north, but he's climbing slowly. He doesn't go to New York. Like we, we would just hold on to him until he gets to. Yeah, because he's uh... inside your airspace. So okay. that's you own that airspace up to seventeen thousand in that entire box, which does encompass part of New York. Gotcha. Right, that's like the guys that come down on the Trish and the Clipper, right? So near Troy's, you that's laterally inside your border. But if they're at flight level three three zero, they're not going to hand them off to you, right? Right. Okay. So it's gotcha. it's the reverse for this. Yeah. Okay, I think I got it. All right. Well, so Brickyard forty four sixty nine Potomac approach or Potomac departure. Good evening. Climb and maintain one seven thousand. Climb maintain one seven thousand. Brickyard forty four sixty nine. Okay. Whatever it is. Yeah, sixty nine. Yep. Need that guy. What is he doing? He's doing. He's on the anthem. What did the anthem get? Then okay. Oh, he's gonna. Uh, Potomac Navy Southwest four seventy eight descending down to uh, six thousand on the Raven. Information Alpha. Southwest four seventy eight Potomac approach. Good evening. Expect ILS runway one zero approach, bottom route timber to three zero two one. Expect ILS approach runway one zero, southwest uh, four seventy eight. Okay, now, uh, if you pause for a second, yep. <laughs> okay. I got. Uh huh. <laughs> I got. Uh, I got traffic jam down here. Um, you do. So Wisconsin 123 is going to ILS 10. Delta 774 is not. He's Oh, yeah, he is, too. Did I never talk to him? No, I did. I gave him... Oh, he's the one that I couldn't get the... Uh, scratch pad to go in for whatever reason. All right, so all three of these guys... Now, and they're going to four, and he's going to six, but... Uh yeah, but he's he's a lot lower than them. Um, okay, so do I break somebody off and start vectoring? Guess... Yeah, well, before we do that, <laughs> I need to correct myself. I I was stuck on that guy going off to the northeast for some reason. That breakyard guy, he is going to Jerry's. He goes to DC before he goes to New York. So ignore everything I just said. That's for the guys going off to the northeast or whatever Philadelphia shit like that. So okay. For so, going through the Jerry's Gate, that would go to DC first. Gotcha. Okay. So sorry Understood. about that. Second of all, to to go to this particular situation, right? So you've got you never want to give another controller a stack, right? And the stack is simply put, you know, one on top of the other, right? It's pretty self-explanatory. Right. If you're the controller and you know you have a stack, it's okay to keep that stack because you know you're going to deal with that stack. Now, you don't have a lot of room to work with on the east side. No, so I do not. You can try a stack on a sweat box and see how that works out for you, right? If you get a good pilot, if they know what they're talking about, if you know, you know, kind of when to turn them and that kind of thing, you can maybe get away with it. You know, if you have one at 3,000 and then descend one to 4,000, you still have that legal separation. But 
you know, it's about the turns, it's about the speed and that kind of thing. So you can try a stack in Sweatbox and see how it works out for you. Which yeah, you now. well, so it's, and it's not though, because the problem is like Southwest 478 is coming off of the Raven, he's going to six. The yep. Wisconsin and the Delta are going to four, but they're above six now. So they're going to have to cross through his altitude to get to what they were assigned. So it's already like there's no so, so vertical separation now? there. Your well, right issue is now, because Wisconsin's higher, right? Yeah. He's Why higher, but Southwest he, 478 go below where Wisconsin's going to go to. I could put Since him at three. He's already lower. Put him at three, in other words. I mean, well, what are you the, look the, at the MVA, right? I was but, just going to say that. Yeah, I don't know mm -hmm. what the MVAs are, but I think they're pretty low here. You know, do you have the MVA chart? Um, yeah, but they're not. This is not three thousand. Right. Yeah, I so, think I mean, the MVA is lower. Check, but it is, yeah, it's lower than three. Yeah. So since he's already lower, right, you can just okay. give give him lower and keep him descending down now. You know what I mean? So, so that way he'll yeah. hopefully yeah, so descend at the same rate as the Wisconsin. Drop him to three, and then probably what I do, honestly. Well, okay, yeah, and then I just let him go because I'm just going to turn him in in that order. The Southwest is going to be the first one I turn in. Yeah, but and before, before you do yeah. any of that, what are your what it, what's what's the altitude you got? Think about the approach at this point, right? So, yeah, the approach for the arrival side of it, their altitudes need to be separated, but you also have to think about their approach too. When you use ILS one zero, what's the mm -hmm. initial fix? Uh, now you're gonna make me look that up. All right, hold on. <laughs> See, if I was good, I would know this uh, because I'm like, hold on. Sh Yeah, if I was prepared, I would have said, oh, Baltimore is in east flow. That means I should have the ILS-10 pulled up and in front of me in case I need to refer to it. <laughs> That's what a good controller would do. That's Well, it, the fact that you're getting to it also That's means... That's what an experienced controller. controller would do. <laughs> That's what an S3 would do. Um, That's what an S3 would do. <laughs> okay, that's so what I got training. Yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> so I one doesn't do that all the time either. So don't worry. Right, about right. It. <laughs> okay, so I got, I got column at twenty five hundred and jeans at fifteen hundred. Obviously, column at twenty five hundred is the one I'm going to aim for. Uh yeah, but you can also use jeans, right? If you use jeans as the anchor, find them a little bit further west than jeans. You can put yeah. them down to sixteen, eighteen, right? Okay. And so putting him down to at least 2,500 also gives you a little bit more room to get the other guy even further down, right? So it's kind of just if you are going to do a stack, if you're going to try a stack, it's stepping them down together to the extent that's, you know, Jared may have a different opinion of how he does it, but I tend to kind of step them down together as long as I'm making sure that they maintain that separation, uh, everything's fine. If I see one not you know, say the, the guy in lead, he's not descending fast enough. I'll usually hold the guy that's in trail. Um, but assuming everyone, you know, maintains a correct amount, you're going to have 1,500 feet separation. Gotcha. Yep, and I do the same thing. I step them down. Just to make sure I keep that 1,000 feet. Yep. And it's important to get them down because... How far do you have to your airspace border after what's the last fix on the mini? Um, yeah, I don't have that up in front of me either. It it's Hun. Okay. After Hun, they fly heading three zero zero or three zero one, something like that. Three, I think it's three zero zero. Southwest four seventy eights on the Raven. They join together at Navy, Navy, Anchor, Laurel, and Hun. Yeah. Okay. Right. So they're both going to go through Hun. Yeah, they're both going to basically take that same mm -hmm. that same path out there. Yep. So as long as they're stepping down, as long as they're descending together, then mm -hmm. you you'll have that separation there, and you can as long they also said they also have to be slow, right? They can't be going two fifty through Hun, because that turn is going to take forever. Uh, gotcha. Yeah. Right. So follow follow heading three zero zero after Hun. So double click Hun, and use your ruler, and I don't, I don't, I don't fly heading I'm... three zero zero. How H far do you have to your airspace border? I don't think I have. Hold on one second. Okay. 
I don't have the MIDI in front of me either. H U N N N. H U N N N. That's okay. Yeah. That's what I missed. I mean, it should be H O N N, but uh, that's what I did, and it wasn't I right. Know. So I thought okay. the same thing when I when I, got, when I came here. So on a three zero zero. Uh, you're kind of out to where that brickyard is now. It's it's like 18 miles. Uh, yeah, so that that's about that's about what you have, right? So you have 18 miles, give or take. I mean, it depends, right? But generally speaking, you have 18 to 20 nautical miles there to deal with them. Where you know you think that's that's a plenty of space. Well, that gets taken up, right? By the people <laughs> calling you for stuff, mm-hmm. by someone calling you for takeoff clearance, right? So you have to pre-plan those events slow these guys down and it's i would personally rather hold them at an altitude and slow them down if they can't do both at the same time gotcha if they refuse to throw the speed break or whatever and they're just not going to descend then i'm going to slow them down and then descend him because to me the descent the speed matters more than the descent Hmm. I don't know okay. you feel otherwise. Well, uh, right. the only reason the only reason I would say that the set's more important right now for 478 is because these guys are going to be on top of him if he doesn't get down. So So oh, it's just he... important to tell the pilot which one you want first, right? Cuz they can't yeah. slow down yeah. and go down. Right. So, uh, you know, if you give them both instructions, you need to tell them which one you want them to do first. So, you know, reduce speed to 210 knots, then descend to maintain 3000 or Send to maintain 2,500, then reduce speed to 210 knots. Right. Okay, gotcha. And those do two <laughs> totally different things. You know what I mean? Yes. And yeah. yes, they, yes, from a pilot standpoint, I'm, oh, yes, I, I can envision the different process that comes in when, you, when you're when you descending first via slowing first. Yep. So exactly. it is, it is, they, they are two very different instructions. Yep. Okay. And in this case, when you brought it up, in this case, I would probably want Southwest, like you said, to descend first. But yeah, right. When he gets down to twenty, you can put him down to twenty five hundred, or can you not do that in that area, based on your MVAs? Uh, well, I'm not gonna look. Um, <laughs> I mean, I was just gonna take him to three at least for now, anyway. But, you could do uh, three. You could do twenty five hundred, right? Twenty five hundred gets you an extra five hundred feet for South for Wisconsin and Delta. Yeah. Where is it? Now, see, I got a uh, diagrams. Di- view diagrams, and it's the stars. It's under stars, okay. Uh, I think it's at the top. Um, yeah, yeah I think so... he, re- he rearranged it. I don't think it's there anymore. Oh, oh uh... Oh. Uh, hold on. Uh, oh, is it under? C-H-P. Yeah, because I have a different vector file than you do. Oh, CHP it, doesn't have a um MVA. Hold on. I mean, these is these are great, but it is like a ton of stuff to look through if you're look trying yeah, to get to yeah, something. The new ones are definitely a. I think it's P- Potomac Tracon MBA, maybe. Yeah, I passed it. Okay, well, we can anyway, find it later. I'll, I'll, I'll take your word for it that it's 2,500. Yeah, it's, it's all, it's actually 1,700 until then it's 2,000. The place where he's going to fly through Navy is 2,000. It goes back down to 17, and then it goes to 2,000 okay. over by uh, Column. So gotcha. you could do 2,500, and that... that now you don't have to worry about further descent to intercept the localizer either. Ah, good. Okay. Right. Okay, because it's already that's already the uh, yep the intercept altitude. Yep. Okay, and he so all right. I think I got it. <laughs> okay. All right. So we'll reset. Rickyard is yep. going to go to DC because I screwed up. Uh, Southwest, you're going to descend down to what? Two thousand five hundred. At two thousand five hundred, and then Wisconsin one twenty three and Delta, you're gonna do what? Uh, slow down. Okay. And you're happy with him at four thousand? Uh, well, I can give him three thousand five hundred. Well, I can give yeah. Well, hmm. All right, so. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I can give him three thousand. I can give Wisconsin three thousand five hundred. Yep. Um. 
Delta, I mean, I, I can because they've got enough in trail spacing as long as they keep that in trail spacing. Yep. Um, now, for those, you have, to, you have to pay attention to Southwest to make sure he descends. As long yeah. as he's descending, then you can give Wisconsin 123 a descent. Okay. Or at least not hold him, right? Yeah. Um, if you don't want to give him a descent, like you just get overworked and you're like, your brain doesn't, you know, screw that, I'm not giving 3,500. You can leave him at 4,000. Yeah, he's got 1,500 feet, right? Yeah, I was going to say, he's still got, what, mm -hmm. 25 miles to get to the airport. So he's, yep. I don't, I'm not in a crush to get him down there now. You're not, no. Okay. Okay, so those guys, you're just going to you leave them at 4,000 if you want or descend them with your choice. But as they're descending, you have to make sure that that Southwest Forest Safety is descending because they're all going to merge at Navy. And obviously, they have to have the separation to merge. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and like you said, keep the speed in mind for 774 and 123, right? Yeah. Because if Southwest slows down, 123 is still 250. That might screw up your plan. Or, you know, if Southwest doesn't slow down when he gets to 2,500, that also is going to screw up your plan. So you yeah, have to gotcha. keep that speed in your mind. Uh, okay. Going to the north, Wisconsin, yep. 3873. Yep, he's, he's probably. Trish. Yep, and he's probably my first one in to get to. Uh, okay. To the um, ILS, but I need to get him down below 4,000 now, too. Yeah, well, and you read my mind because that's actually what I was going to ask you. So, sequence that you, that you, in your mind, in, in your sequence of arrivals. 3873 and then what? Uh he's going north. Um 3873. I, I I haven't talked to the guy out to the west yet. Um yeah. but he is probably closer in than these guys coming from the south. He's 40 miles. Yep. yep. And this guy's still. And on the track. anthem they do that that dog leg, right? From flag. Mm -hmm. So they, they go to flag and then fly due south or close to, and then they kind of swing back for a downwind. So the, yeah, he's got he's got some time to fly. Okay, so he does. So it's probably Wisconsin, yeah. and then it's it might be at least two, if not all three of these guys coming in from the south, and then what's perfect. CPZ? Uh, compass. Compass. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Then after those guys, Compass, you 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 just acknowledge that you have not talked to him yet, so he should be talking to you soon. Uh, looking up north, yeah, yeah, 427, right? He's going to Baltimore, BOR. All you're going to watch is make sure he goes on 10,000 and slows down, and then you're going to hand him off to uh, a controller. <laughs> we'll get uh, to that in, one later. In Sue, or no, or that's the other, another one that's no. like it's going to end up being deal. It's deal. Okay. Uh, no, it's uh, OJ, sorry. Well, that's OJ? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> For which one? <laughs> uh, 427. No, it's deal. Isn't it? Oh, yeah. No, you're right. Sorry. Good deal. Okay. We don't even know. See? Yeah, I have to refer to the chart. Just like <laughs> yeah, you. Right, exactly. Blind leading the blind here. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it usually is. You signed up for this training, so that's right. Yes, it. that's true. Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, and then you have Envoy also doing the same thing. He's on the Trish, right? But. Now you have one aircraft that you have not accepted handoff to. Yeah, the f uh, flagship. Is that what that is? Flagship, yeah. Yeah. And then What's he doing? What is he doing? He's flashing at me in purple. Um, <laughs> aside, aside from this. He's, uh, oh, he's uh, Victor 378 Baltimore. Okay. So he's going to need to be radar vectored to uh, ILS runway 10. Um, so I'm going to have to work him in probably behind the envoy, I guess. Uh, you can. Um, now he's 47 miles from the Baltimore VOR. Mm -hmm. Uh, those guys that are coming in from the South may or may not be gone. Right. So you can let him on, keep him on his flight plan. Just make sure you give him descent mm -hmm. and then bring him down through Hun if you want to. Right. So you don't have to, if you want to keep him at 12,000 until envoy starts to descend along the Trish and then kind of step him down and then fly him south of Baltimore, you can do that. Oh, I can bring him in. Okay. Bring him in from kind of the south. Brooklyn. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Or if, if you eventually do get enough separation, you can also try to slow him down, um, descend him and slow him down and then bring him in behind envoy. So you have a couple of choices there, right? Sometimes controllers, students, they see no arrival and then it's like the end of the world. What do I do? Well, sometimes just let him fly his flight plan, 
you yeah. know, obviously well, no worse fly by the Yeah, and it's it's not end of the world. It's just I'm no. building that line that's coming in from the north. So I've got two stacks. I've got two kind of merging streams, I guess, right? I've got the stream kind of merging in from the north and east, and right. I got the stream kind of merging in from the south and east. But I've got an I've also got another target coming in from the north on that brickyard. So I could put flagship, I could cross flagship down the east side of the airspace, have him come in behind Wisconsin and Delta. And then that gives me space to put Brickyard in behind Envoy. Yep, exactly. Okay. Or maybe even ahead of Envoy, honestly. Or even ahead, yeah. It, yeah, yeah. it depends on other, how the, it all shakes out. But, you know, I, I kind of hope you can kind of see that you have options, right? So don't. Yes. I do have options. To... And one of them is to drink heavily and, and prevent my <laughs> brain from melting. <laughs> That's the only way I control. <laughs> <laughs> cool. All right. Uh, so let's get moving. Who do you want to talk to first out of the, out of the pause? Um, Southwest 478. Okay, go ahead. Southwest 478, descend and maintain 2,500. Down to 2,500, Southwest 478. Delta 774, reduce speed 210 knots. Reduce speed 210, Delta 774. Wisconsin 123, reduce speed 210 knots. We'll do our best to slow it down to 210, Wisconsin 123. Okay. Uh, I have sort of a plan for those guys now. Now let's okay pick up that guy and pick up that guy. Yep. Atomic good evening, Brickyard thirty one forty three information Alpha at National one six thousand. Brickyard thirty one forty three Potomac approach. Cross Baltimore at and maintain one zero thousand two five zero knots. Washington landing north. Baltimore altimeter three zero two one. Copy all that. Uh, we'll uh, cross Baltimore at and maintain one zero thousand. Speed two five zero knots. Brickyard thirty one forty three. All right, so he's going to one zero zero. Boom. Oh. All right. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. He's at 154 and climbing. He's at 140 and descending. Okay, so those two guys in the northwest are okay. Um, all right, and then the flagship I haven't talked to yet. Nope. Uh, but high flagship. up on your priority, think of who you can get off your frequency to, right? Reduce your workload. Um, yeah, good point. Um, so if I do, hold on, F4... <laughs> And 32, and he's clear conflicts. Brickyard 4469, contact Washington Center 133.72. 133.72, good night, Brickyard 4469. And then, why didn't that? Okay, there he's, he's gone. All right, American 427. Wisconsin 3873, descend and maintain 2,500. 2,500, Wisconsin 3873. Atomic departure, good evening, like jet jet, exec jet, excuse me, 616, holding short, Rummy 15, right, ready to go. Aircraft calling a one five right. Stand by. Hold on, hold on. F five zero two five. Yeah, I'm getting flustered. Pause it, Jared. Yeah. Okay. okay. I'm getting flu <laughs> I'm getting flustered because I'm just trying to remember the keystrokes, and that's what's okay. holding me up. I think uh, sometimes I do this. If you have an aircraft already in select. Mm -hmm. And try to type it, and then re then reselect another aircraft. Sometimes it doesn't work. So yeah, I think that's what's what I'm getting tangled yeah. up on. Hit, hit escape until it's cleared. And yeah, then try it. Got to get in that habit, of just clearing yeah. it out every time. Yeah. All right. And so what? While it's paused, the one thing I haven't really addressed yet. Okay, those three guys coming from the south are fine. The Wisconsin thirty-eight seventy-three. I'm going to need to give him a turn in. He's he's kind of past column now, so I need that's probably the next thing I need to do is get him a turn. However, that flagship guy I still have not talked to. What's he doing? And is he going to run into my envoy? 
Um, Envoy is at 10 going to 4. Flagship's at 12. So no, there's no conflict there, but I do need to talk to that guy. And what is he doing? He's Oh, he's the one that's like direct Baltimore. Uh, yeah, basically. Just, yeah. yeah. And he's... Okay, so he's going to need to be given ILS 10. He, oh, he was the one we were talking about swinging down past the east side of the... Yeah, of as the, an option. Uh, right. Of the that's airspace, yeah. Right. But I haven't talked, yeah. still haven't talked to him yet. The Now... Sometimes this does happen, right? Suddenly New York hands you off those aircraft. Yeah. Sometimes they do get busy. You know, sometimes pilots don't always, you know, instant, instantly call someone up when they tell them to, right? Um, if you're concerned, if you see flagship, if you notice that he starts to descend for some reason, right? Mm -hmm. the, you, the only person you have control over right now is Envoy. True. You could give a descent now. Right, so Envoy forty four yeah. fifty five. Just going to maintain seven thousand, or six thousand, or you know whatever. Gotcha. Something that's okay. So know, yeah, so I put forty in there because he's coming down via the yeah. arrival. But if I give him a descend and maintain, that's now. That's like correct. Start and down now. You can give him. That's when you would use the temp altitude, right? So it's not. You have to go back to him. So if you if you tell him descend and maintain, I don't know, seven thousand, right? Yeah. He that at Trish, he's supposed to be above nine thousand. So probably still will be close, even if you told him to go down 7,000 now. But that, he can't go any lower than 7,000. The next altitude is Dock, I believe, and it's at 5,000 or above. At that okay. point, right, you have to tell him, if you take him off the arrival for either lateral turns, vectors, uh, or descents, you have to re re give him that clearance, right, in a way. Right, so, so Envoy 4455, just to maintain 7,000. If he's at 7,000, he that's as low as he can go. Right, yeah, because he's, he, he's not going to automatically resume the descent. Correct, unless you tell okay. him. Unless, right, okay. So at that point, I'm basically taking direct control over his altitude management. Exactly, yeah, his... Yeah. his you know, VNAV. <laughs> yeah, yeah, in, exactly, right. He's, he's, VNAV, he's no right? longer in VNAV. Yeah, uh, I, yeah. He's, yeah well, he's, you hope not, right? Um, <laughs> but, that's a dis different discussion for a different day <laughs> it definitely is probably one off of uh off mm -hmm. the but um it, the the you know and, and that's really it, you're not really going to have to do that very often but it's sometimes you get people that don't really know a lot and they're new and whatever and they just say i'm going to go down to 11,000. screw it well that's you know you don't know what they're going to go to right? yeah. all you see is them descending Gotcha. The fact that you had that situational awareness to say, well, I haven't talked to him yet. I, he hasn't called me up and blah, blah, blah. That's what you have to do in your scan. So that's perfectly your spot on. That's the kind of thing you have to do on your scan. Yeah. Okay. Well, good. I'm, I'm glad I got one thing right tonight. Um, <laughs> and, <laughs> then temp out, one, but... and then temp altitude was the, it was the F7, right? So that's F7. Uh, yeah, I think so. Right no, there. no, it's not because that says weather. Um, temp altitude's F8. Eight, thank you. There it is. Okay. So 070. Seven, zero. I'm still or, a dinosaur when I control VRC. I use the yeah. right, the menu, uh, the menu, right click, the right yeah. click menu. When it's yeah. it probably I use the hard altitude when it's a descent. I always just use the hard altitude because no one else is going to really just talk to him after you. That's true. Air, at least. That's true. But I think so I think I need that T there to, as the reminder. Okay. Well, there that you go. I, well, you know what? I, but but it, it's yeah, a, it's it, a it's it true. draws my eye to it. Okay, I did something non-standard with him. You know. Absolutely. So well, and that that's that proves the point, right? As long as you're not going to hand anybody off, or hand this person to somebody else with a temp altitude in it, mm -hmm. you can do whatever you whatever you need to to make sure that you you capture all the information. So whether you yeah. do it like Jared said, just hard altitudes, period, or use the temp altitudes, that's fine. Yeah, gotcha. Makes sense. Okay. But yeah, for me, I think I like having the T there just as a reminder, like okay, that's that's something that's not on his normal arrival. Okay. Uh, Potomac and Evening Compass 5712-1-1000. Compass 5712, Potomac approach. I keep forgetting my own call sign. Potomac <laughs> approach. Descend via the Anthem 3 arrival, Baltimore Timber 3021, expect ILS runway 10 approach. Anthem 3, ILS 10 approach, Compass 5712. All right, so... With it, scan. yeah, scan. I was just gonna say that. Who, who's who's flying over the Baltimore VOR right now? Okay, American four twenty seven, and I forget what happens to them once they've done that. They get handed off at that point, right? Yep. The deal. Well, 
Usually about five miles before Baltimore. Before yeah. Baltimore, okay. Because again, yep. for the same reason, they don't have a lot of space. Right? Yeah, all right, got it. And so uh, F4, and again, I'm, I would go F4 and 1D, but for now it's 32. Right. American 427, contact, Potomac approach now, 128.35, we'll see you. 128.35, good night. Potomac flagship 4091, sorry for the late call, New York had me long, uh, 12000. Flagship 4091, Potomac approach, good evening, Baltimore altimeter 3021, and uh, yeah, probably just keep flying. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Uh, well, no, hold on one we'll second. Hold, hold on one second. Hold on one second. <laughs> Flagship 4091, Potomac Approach, Baltimore, Alabama, 3021. Descendant maintain 4000, turn left, heading 180. Turn left, 180, down to 4000. Flagship 4091. Okay, are you happy with this guy? Is coming down through, hun? Uh, oh, wait a minute. Happy with, hold on, was happy with which guy? Well, so, you got oh, some well, guys that are in your finals box, right? Yeah, yeah. So with Constant, he's a, he's he's like well well overdue for a turn. He is. Uh, Wisconsin. All right, and I'm now going to need to pause it because I need to refresh okay. myself on the phraseology for the P tech. Sure. Um, well, you're not you're not you're not gonna, you're not going to give him a P tech from here, are you? N well, no. I need to turn him in okay. first, which would be a, uh, a left to probably about a one. One zero, I would think, maybe at this point, right? Yeah, I mean, it it depends, right? So you have to look at his speed as well. Two hundred, he can probably do that, right? If he's barreling down to two fifty, which he shouldn't be, right, on the arrival. Yeah. But if he is, then that's going to be a heck of a wide turn, right? So if yeah. that's the case, either you want to slow him down, or if you don't have anybody there, then or anybody else there, just give him that base turn and then the final turn. Gotcha. Okay, that far out though, I'm gonna go ahead and just bang him onto the 110. All right. So with, How Wisconsin. Else could you do it? Well, no, 110. Besides won't. a P tech. Yeah, yeah, 110 won't do it. 110 won't work. Yeah, you can't do 110. So you, you use okay. So the easiest way to think about this in your brain. And sorry, Jared, do you want to say what you're gonna say first? No, you're good. Okay. So where are you gonna use as an anchor to give him his P tech? Uh, column, I, I would guess, right? Okay. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing else. There's nothing else yeah. on the chart. There's nothing, nothing, yeah. no, nothing further west on the chart. So, yeah. what's his current heading to column? Current heading to column is 120, but by the time he finishes yeah. the turn, he's going to need to keep it rolling. That's why I said 110. Well, maybe. I mean, if, if, if you want him to go direct column, you can also have him go direct column. That's a tough one. Oh, right? That's but, true. Yeah, that's a big um, return, but... I mean, yeah, it's a bitch so you, of a turn no matter what. That's why he went is. way too far west. <laughs> well, Wisconsin, yeah. 3873, why didn't you read my mind and turn? <laughs> <laughs> it just turned south. Right? So <laughs> from hoist, right, the other thing you can kind of do is you can say depart hoist heading 190, right? And that, once they leave hoist, they'll turn left heading 190, assuming they know what you're talking about. Yeah. And that kind of puts them on a base. Now, they're they're pretty far out there when, if they do that from hoist, right, seven miles or something like that. Okay. So that turn is just so that you know you got to do something else, right? Now, yeah. if you don't want to do that, that's fine. You can give him a couple of turns here, but you, you can't give him 110. 110 okay. is basically going to be parallel to the runway. Oh, okay, I got what you're saying. So 120 right. would get him direct to column. He's not going to get direct to column, but he'll intercept that localizer further out. Yeah, I mean, but you also have to think about it. You, you have to think about your turns right you wouldn't want to necessarily dial in that huge turn just you probably want to give them a couple turns give them a base first and then you can give them the base is going to go quick yeah exactly that's, that's okay. a pretty that's a sizable turn right yeah so a le you, you so a left just right now putting on a left to 120 you don't think is but if i put I mean, them a little go ahead what are you saying what would be a 90 degree base would probably be a better Okay, so like 190. And then yeah. that just gives you, gets him a little closer to the, the, the final approach course. And when you give him the PTAC, you'll be a little more assured of where he's going to join it. Okay. It's also just a little bit nicer for the pilot than giving him the 120 degree turn. Yeah. 
We're, right, um, which I wouldn't do, except that I just, I, yeah, he just, I just forgot about him until he's way west. Well, and another thing you can give him, you can give him a one six zero from where he's at. Right, one six zero isn't a too much of a turn. It's still a turn, but and it also does move him east, which is what you want him okay. to do. That's the, that's that's what you want him to do, and it also kind of gives him a slight shallower turn and onto the localizer because what Jerry was saying there, I mean, if it's too sharp of a term, the localizer, because of the angle that you gave him, he's going to blow through it. Mm -hmm. So as much as you can think about that extended out pattern. So from the downwind left to base and then left to final, even if it's two seconds, three seconds, he's on that base turn. It does kind of line him up better with the localizer. Okay. So just give him, just give him it in two steps, but it's going to be two steps like right after the other. Pretty close, yeah. yeah. You, you don't want to waste a lot of time because then he will fly through the localizer, and then you have to say, you know, vectors yeah. the localizer, blah blah blah. So, what's the maximum intercept angle onto the localizer? Thirty. So, very rarely am I will I use anything but the thirty degree intercept angle. Okay, because gotcha. I know it's going to get them to the localizer, and they're going to turn and follow it anyway, and uh, um, it just gets them there a little bit easier. If you give them like one twenty or one ten. Then they're just going to kind of fly parallel for a while until they just kind of float into the final approach yeah, course. You know gotcha. what I mean? And it's just kind of a weird turn when you do it that way. So it's okay to give him 130 knowing that he's going to hit the localizer way up past column. Right. I don't have to point um, him. But I think that I think that's the thing. It's like in my head, I'm like, I got to point him at column. And, and the answer is no, I don't. No. no. Hmm. Um, okay. And so what, what would be your two intercept angles? If he's north of the final approach course, what would be your intercept angle? Well, we're assuming 100, right? I know it's not uh-huh. exactly 100, but it's um, it's uh, 140 to 1. I'm sorry, 130 to, to 080. 070. It's so 70. Okay, 70 to, yep. yes. 70 to so 10, 10 to You'll hear lots of turn right heading 070, turn left heading 130. Okay. So I'll just my final. Yep. So I'll just use um, that from here. Another thing kind of to keep in mind is most localizer beams go out about 20-ish miles. Right. And after that, they they become kind of unusable. Yeah. So if you get him much farther than he is right here, um, he's he might not be able to capture that localizer. So when they get that far out, you know, I might give him a, a left turn for a base and then clear him direct to column, like, like John said. Um, just because that's going to get them a lot closer. And I know at column, they're going to be able to intercept the localizer. And it's a little bit easier on you too. You don't have to do the whole P-TECH, you know, clear direct column, cross column, 2,500, clear to ILS, runway one zero approach. It just gotcha. makes your life a little bit easier, right? Gotcha. Okay, so right now he gets a left turn, we'll say to one three zero, And then as soon as he rolls out on that, um, then I can give him the, the, the P-TECH. Yep. Okay. Yep. Now, to throw another wrench into it, sure. right? Uh, f- Southwest 478. Still yep. coming at 250, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, is there a speed restriction on the Raven that would impact you? I mean, obviously, there's a speed restriction further down the line, but is there a speed restriction within kind of the, that final straight con area? Uh, well... You're talking about from the arrival itself? Yeah. Uh, I guess it helped if I looked at the second page. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't look like there's any any speeds in the no, game on it. No. no. So that's a good can... that's a good thing to kind of keep in mind because it is. You know, now me as a as a quote unquote experienced pretend airliner <laughs> pilot you know i'm already th- as soon as i'm in the terminal area i'm already thinking 210 yeah, but, I, you but you're but you're right that a lot of you know a lot of less experienced pilots are just going to blow through 250 because it's like hey it's 250 under 10 i'm fine exactly so. and they want to land right everyone wants to just land and get <laughs> right. that recorded in their acars yeah. um it, the and the reason why i bring that up is because you have such a distance now between wisconsin and the Southwest and the other and the additional uh, Wisconsin. So what you need you to do, guys, is figure like play this backwards, back it up to where <laughs> I should have turned him in. <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> I wish we could do that. <laughs> Hold uh, on, I'm just gonna. <laughs> right. yeah, yeah, give me a half an hour while I reposition all these planes. <laughs> exactly. We'll get back to you. Um, 
but uh, so it, it, but that's okay because this is still real world. I mean, as much yeah. as this simulation ever is, <laughs> right? But there are going to be times when the, when your files box does expand, yeah. you have to work to condense it, right? So right. Southwest 470, you can descend him down, slow him down, then descend him down and turn him towards genes, in between genes and column, right? And that gets you. Oh, good gracious! Yeah, so first. I so I've screwed up Wisconsin's sequence here, but I, he doesn't now need to still he. Correct. He's probably pissed off if three people jump the yeah. line because Whatever. I messed up, but that's how I'm going to fix it. So. Well, the but, good thing but is you're helping tell yourself. Them. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. Hey, it was <laughs> hey, Wisconsin thirty-eight seventy-three. You were number one for the field. Now you're number four. <laughs> <laughs> now you're number four. So get ready to hold, but. You know, so that you can kind of get, and then what that does is actually starts to condense your files box, so you don't have to have it worry about going that far west again. Yeah. Okay. Got it. And if you think about, you know, air traffic control, it's not the, you know, it's not first come first serve. First come yeah. first serve. It's the most expeditious flow of traffic. Yeah, you know what exactly. I mean? So, right. Do what you got to do to do that. Yep. All right. I'm just checking okay. on time. I know you guys said you had a. Uh... Commitment at uh, top of the hour. Well, so. let's land a couple of aircraft at least. Okay. I want to uh, hear that tower cadence from you. <laughs> <laughs> that have got down. That I'm gonna. I'm gonna give. I'm gonna give somebody a landing clearance, and then I'm gonna completely forget that there's an approach thing going on here. <laughs> That's awesome. All, All right. right. So let's let's. Uh, who do you want to talk to first? I don't know at this point. What's Southwest four seventy eight? Uh, turn right heading zero one zero. Turn right heading zero one zero. What else you want to do? Uh, reduce speed to uh, reduce speed one seven zero knots. And and uh, get ready. And he to looking land. at the chart is <laughs> where where does he pick up the localizer? Uh, the the glide scope. Excuse me. Uh, it's going to be genes. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you're you're yeah you're you're having me think about the descent. Yeah, jeans. Okay, so jeans. I'm I'm gonna have to have them down at fifteen hundred. Yeah, or you know, it's a little bit further west, so you can do eighteen hundred or something like that. I mean, it's okay. not southwest four seventy eight descent and maintain one thousand eight hundred. One thousand eight hundred. And Wisconsin thirty eight seventy three. We'll turn left heading one three zero. I think you said. Uh, a firm one three zero. Now, the next in sequence, because that guy still hasn't turned, Wisconsin. The other Wisconsin 123 is at 4,000. Yep. What should you do? Uh, Wisconsin 123, descend and maintain 3,000. And let's see, do I want to give him... The, I, I guess I'm supposed to give him a, a turn also, right? To keep him kind Eventually, of behind. Yeah. Okay. All right, so Wisconsin 123, the center maintain 3,000, reduce speed, 1, 9, or 0 knots. 1, 9, or 0, then down to 3,000, Wisconsin 123. Southwest 478, 4 miles from Jeans. No, I can't do that yet. Southwest 478, turn right heading 1070. We'll turn right heading 070. Why uh, couldn't you give why, the yeah, I was, yeah. <laughs> why, <laughs> why, why couldn't you... I? Yeah, because it's because it's a ninety degree intercept. No, no, as long as you give him the turn is a yeah. oh okay thirty degree. Gotcha. I paused it so you can work on your P tech. Yeah. All right. So so in my mind, this is this is me being a bad vet sim vet vet sim controller. So in my mind, I've come to think of the P tech as P A C right. Because we tend to give the turns in the instruction before, just to simplify things for the pilots. Uh, uh, real world, obviously. Break it up and say like join the localizer kind of thing. Yeah, I mean something like that. So um, okay. But uh, but yeah, so so certainly by by the book by the seventy one ten, Southwest four seventy eight turn right heading zero seven zero. Um, four miles from Jeans. Well, no, yeah, turn right heading from zero four zero. I'm oh, sorry, zero P. seven zero. The P, yeah, P first. F oh, okay, P is first, right? Okay, four mm -hmm. miles from jeans. Turn right heading zero four zero. Maintain two thousand. Maintain one thousand 
whatever the whatever I gave you, one thousand five hundred. <laughs> Still established on the localizer cleared ILS one zero, runway one zero approach. All right, I heard you say right heading zero four zero. Is yeah. that what you want? It is zero seven zero is the correct heading? Okay, we'll turn right heading zero seven zero, and we'll maintain one thousand five hundred until established cleared ILS runway one zero approach. It's nice to get the whole thing down, right? Yeah. All right, I'll unpause it. Sorry. All right. All right. So Brickyard, you need to think about heading him off. I mean, he's south of Baltimore now. Holy cow! Um, Brickyard thirty-one. Oh shoot! No, I gotta hand him off. Radar hand him off first. All right. <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> Crap. And that's um. That's okay. Ignore him. That's that's we can move on. That's okay. F four, thirty-two. Slap him over there. No, what did I do? Okay. Rickyard 3143 contacts Potomac approach 128.35. 12835, good night. Southwest 478 wind. I guess I should know the wind. <laughs> wind 090 at 6, runway 10, cleared land. Uh, copy the wind, runway 10, cleared land, Southwest 478. So turn 123. Yeah. Wisconsin 123, turn right heading 070. Turn right zero seven. Descend to maintain right. two thousand five hundred. Why? Uh, hold on. Take zero seven zero from where he's at now, and tell me where that would end up. Oh yeah, he's gonna be like, well, it's, hold on, I'm gonna two, two planes are gonna crash into each other. Um, so I should give him probably more like a like a base to like zero two zero. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. Wisconsin one twenty three. Before you do that, and he's still at three thousand, right? So if you're gonna yeah, bring him in so... on a base. Yeah, so 1,500. Uh, yeah, you can do that. I don't, that's I don't know how to shut that up. Okay, got it. Uh, is it making the noise? Uh, yeah, because I got two planes that are about to crash into each other. Yeah. Oh, well, I know, but it, the... You can it was. The off. Yeah, well, I, I had to remember how. Oh. <laughs> well, they're gone anyway now, so we're good. Okay. Well, they're all gone. What happened? Uh-oh. Uh, I'm... S oh, yeah. Oh, connected. Yeah. You got disconnected, Jared? Yeah. Yeah, they're all okay, coasting now. Well, <laughs> that's uh that's Vetsim's way of saying enough. Well, um, yeah, I was gonna say, on that note. <laughs> <laughs> that's a perfect way to end the uh the, the session. Yes, um, indeed. Okay, well, so I you know, I, I think how do you feel? I guess is is a good question. How do you feel about that session? Uh overwhelmed. Right. And uh that's the fair. the biggest thing thing that I think is is kind of my stumbling block is I had kind of prepared for the basic procedure of when each new plane checks onto the frequency what do you what's the basic thing that you do with them yeah um what I hadn't prepared for was like okay what's the next thing they get you know what I mean mm -hmm. um yeah. and so kind of mentally preparing myself for okay watching okay now they're west of the field now I need to turn them in now I need to get them onto the approach you know, it's like I hadn't kind of mentally thought. You know how the the the, the guidance is always like be one step ahead of the airplane. I was mm -hmm. not one step ahead of any of these airplanes. I was right along. I was kind of reacting to everything. You know what I mean? I was very reactive to everything that I saw tonight. So definitely not thinking ahead of what is this plane's next step. What is this plane's next step? What is this plane's next step? So, so that's where people, I kind of have to. Go ahead. A lot of people come at. S3 the same way, right? Yeah. Because you come from tower, which is very procedural. You know what yeah. I mean? And uh, radar is not like that. It's, you know, kind of like tower VFR. We give you lots of tools, but it's kind of up to you to decide how it works. Yeah. And and because, sure, you have everybody on all these arrivals and stuff, but, you know, every situation isn't the same. Right. And, you know, one tool might be more effective than another tool, you know, like either direct column or giving the PTAC or assigning the RNAV or, you know, like there's lots that goes into, into yeah. that. Yep. And so you got to kind of think more, um, positive separation and pointing them mm -hmm. towards the airport and yep. doing what you can to keep a tight sequence. Right. And so do you know what I get by positive, but I mean by positive separation? Uh, yes. Meaning that, um, you're not putting two aircraft on a converging course at the same altitude. Right. Yeah. Um, I, 
I don't know if uh, someone explained it to me where, uh, you know, if I'm the, if I'm controlling and I have all these airplanes and my power goes out, if I have am practicing good positive separation, nobody's going to run into anybody. Right. Exactly. Because right. if they're converging, they're they're they've got. It, it's basically you have at least one, if not two, types of separation applied at all times to all planes. So exactly. if, if they're yep. yeah, even if they're not yet converging, they're still a thousand foot separated. So at the point where they're starting to merge, you've already got that. Um, right. You've already got that backup plan, so you're not going to crash. Always assured of that of yeah. that separation, right? Yep. So, yep. Um, so if you can play that game really well, then a lot of this other stuff doesn't really matter. You know what I mean? Right. Um, and it, then all it becomes is just pointing them in at the airport in the most efficient way possible. So yeah. But, gotcha. The uh, other thing that I think it, it, yeah. it, it is a factor of the of the length of time since our last session, which. You know, again, is a is a multi factored uh, <laughs> yeah. is a multi factored situation, but that's fine. Um, is that uh, it, it's been a long time since I've really looked at these arrivals and how each one kind of terminates. You know what I mean? And I put I didn't put a lot of clutter on the screen. I took a lot of stuff off, but I think there's a lot of stuff that probably I should put back on the screen as far as certain fixes go. Because I'm not like I, you know, I was like to send via the MIDI, and then I'm like, oh, kind of the MIDI's kind of shaped like this, and it kind of dumps them off here, and I'm not really remembering, um, and I'm not really conscious of how these things interact with one another. So if like I've got a MIDI and I've got a, a Trish, you know, are they are those things gonna conflict with one another, or which which ones merge and which ones don't? You know what I mean? So it's like all that stuff is rusty knowledge that I'm trying to struggle to think back. What did you guys tell me last time? And that's like six weeks eight weeks ago or whatever it was so right um, and we're throwing new stuff at you from the left so it's like yeah now yeah right. indeed which it, right so and it's so it, it was it was kind of an overwhelming session but i think it'll be a good one for me to watch back and um and and just mentally practice like okay now that i'm seeing this again with fresh eyes and I'm, I'm able to kind of focus on what i know is going to happen it's like okay well at this point this is what i should have done with this guy you know what i mean so the, having this to review back will be a good, you know, kind of a good exercise. Agree. Yeah, I think so too. I think that yep. <clears throat> to go back and and to review those things and and see where you could have done something different. I mean, think the the key the key takeaway from this is that you have options, right? Yeah. Um, you can if there's no one in the north, you can fly someone from the south, take them off the MIDI, right? If you're yeah. overloaded with the MIDI and the Raven, it's just right. too much, and you know, there's nothing wrong with taking someone off the arrival. It, it does require more work and effort and that kind of thing to, yeah. to vector them around. But right. if it's that's that's the last resort. So you have multiple ways of getting this done. Yeah. Uh, and you don't have to stick to the same one every time. Yeah. Yeah. I think the biggest takeaway, like I said, going back to what I said a moment ago, um, because even when aircraft were checking onto the frequency and I was accepting the handoffs, I, I, I'm not yet in that habit of already looking to see which arrival he's on and thinking ahead what's the instruction he's about to get so every time i clicked on a on a handoff yep. i went and did something else and then when that guy finally started talking to me it's already like whoosh gone and now i gotta look at this plan again and go oh yeah that's right he's on the trish he gets this or he's on the clipper he gets the ten thousand or whatever so um so again that 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 mentality of already having thought through what his next step is before he calls me up is is just something that I haven't gotten to yet. Yep, good habit to build. Yeah, Indeed. definitely part of your scan. Yep, 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 yep. All right, well, good guys. Uh, we're doing this again two weeks from today. Is that not correct? Yep. Nope. That should correct. be a little bit better turnaround time as far as you know being able to keep some of the stuff a little fresher, so I won't have to stumble through basic things like oh, which F key should I be hitting and that sort of thing. So hopefully, um, you know, next time through we can focus a little bit more on the procedure of the flight rather than the procedure of the keyboard and the procedure of the scope so that's that's my goal and hopefully that'll get us a little bit more practice with the concepts less so that the the tools yeah and i think at some point you know the next progression right is, is to kind of this this is just kind of seeing how it all kind of rolls together and um, you know, it all kind of flows. The next kind of progression that I usually take students through would, would be kind of vectoring, right? So we can mm -hmm. do a vector drill if you want to, um, or we can just, you know, practice with the turns. I think it's important to see yeah. that visually, you know, because, okay, well, I want him to turn one, two, zero, but how fast is he going? You know, how right. you know, all the other factors that are there. Right. It's hard sometimes in Spotbox because they do exactly what we want them to do. 
but I think yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, let's yeah, let's let's start with level one, which is yeah. compliance. You know, yes. let's let's get me good at handling planes who do what they're supposed to or do what they're asked to, and yep. then we'll throw in the curveballs. Yeah, and 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 so that after after your, the vector drill that we'll do, um, you know, then we'll kind of go through satellite fields because that's that's also <laughs> going to be a lot of fun, um, and that's you know, <laughs> that's also a very much a challenge, right? That's something that people don't think yeah. about when they first start this, but that's yeah. a huge part of what we do. Uh, yeah, um, frequency Especially change advisory is approved. Mr. Qual can maintain vehicle. <laughs> Radar service is terminated. <laughs> See, I got that one down already. <laughs> yeah. Request as uh, approved as requested. Yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Pilot's discretion. Uh, I could confirm or deny that I've, I've yeah, actually said that before. <laughs> land, land, at, land at pilot's discretion. Frequency yeah, change advisory exactly. is approved. Oh. Uh, but you know, and, and, and you'll get there. I think the fact that yeah. and that's important as positive stuff is that you saw things, right? That's the hardest part. A few of them. <laughs> uh, you, you saw you saw a lot, sir. You did, well, and more than most students do. So you got to give yourself credit there. But okay. it's putting it but all there together. Was, yeah, there was definitely some stuff I was real shaky at though too. So oh, yeah. so yeah, everyone's got strengths and, and weaknesses. I appreciate you, you know, kind of balancing the the feedback too. And, it doesn't um, hurt that he came in thinking, "What did Jared? What does Jared have planned for me?" <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes and no. I mean, I kind of, I kind of expected some shenanigans, right. and uh, f certainly a couple pilots that were not on standard arrivals and standard departures was, uh, was not unexpected. It didn't help me really <laughs> figure out what to do with them, but I, I, I was not surprised to see those. <laughs> oh. Um, but, uh, but yeah, no, it was a good, it was a really good lesson. Of course, we, you know, working with you guys is always great. And, uh, don't, uh, don't ever, you know, as, as if we do these or if we, or if Dylan gets involved in the next one or whoever I end up working with, uh, I don't want anyone to think that just because, you know, Rob is live streaming this thing that you guys can't drill me hard and, and, uh, you know, really, and, and put me to the paces and, you know, put me in those scenarios that, you know, we're going to make me mess up and embarrass myself because that is <laughs> no, no, and then seriously, because, I have I learned more from my failures, and I think this is true of a lot of people. I'm I'm going to remember that. You know, if I put two planes together, I'm going to remember that, and I'm going to be right. less likely to do it next time. So, um, so yeah, and but, and like some of the tower control, just you know, just doing the live stream with the tower, and I've done silly things like you know, landing people with with guys lined up waiting, and uh, or I forget that there's somebody on final when I put somebody on a runway or something like that. And yeah, those stick with you. <laughs> <laughs> they do. Well, uh, as someone said in the chat, you know, there's a lot of gotchas here, but you know, that's why you know we we we'll yeah. make a couple of mistakes. Exactly right. No, you guys right. Them, no, you, you know. guys are real good as far as like setting up. The, these are the scenarios that will catch you out. So we want you to see them on Sweatbox before you see them on the live network. Yep, exactly. Yeah. No, you guys do a real good job of that stuff. So. Well, and you don't have to worry about us not putting you against the wall with the next couple of uh, files. So don't worry about that part. <laughs> yeah. I'm, yeah. No. Yes. And I will definitely, um, there was the question of whether I was drinking vodka and Red Bull tonight or just vodka or just Red Bull tonight. It was just Red Bull. Next time it'll be just vodka. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll do a shot every time there's an altitude change. How's that? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Very good. I, I think what we, I, I can't remember if we said this on stream or off stream. I think instead of the P56 bust count, it's going to be uh, the counter of how many times do, do I ask the instructors to pause? So. <laughs> Which is the why I can't see straight right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, John. I think I owed you that one, though. Fair point. But thinking back to last, uh, last December, I think I owed you that one. You do. You definitely do. Okay. Not good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, I think that's that where we're going to go ahead and, and wrap up uh, for tonight. Um, just for the benefit of my stream viewers, uh, know that the rest of the evening is going to be spent continuing to prepare that PMDT 737 for flights in 2020, which I'm flying for them on Friday. So, um, probably just get the rest of the controls configured, get the rest of my checklist thrown together and, and be ready to hop on. Well, probably do one offline flight followed by one online flight on Friday for him. So that's what the rest of tonight's going to be spent. Just kind of unwinding from this and then, uh, <laughs> and then probably review this tomorrow night. Uh, after, after the wife goes to bed, I'll probably watch this one back and just kind of get a sense of where my, uh, you know, where my weaknesses are. So cool. Good. Good enough. Awesome. Works for me. All right, guys. 
yeah, thanks again. Appreciate you. Uh, appreciate you being here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, close up the uh, team speak. And thanks again. And we'll talk to you in a couple weeks. Thanks, Rob. All right, John, Rob. John, Jared, thank you very much, guys. Thanks, Rob. Disconnected. All right. Well, there you have it. That is the uh, that is our uh, approach and departure lesson for tonight. You guys can see. Uh, I hope that uh, those of you who were, were kind of eavesdropping in really got a chance to see how much there is to think about for an approach controller. And this is just one set. This isn't even the entire Potomac Tracon. This is one chunk of it. This is the chunk that surrounds BWI Airport, Baltimore. In our own parlance, we would call it the Chesapeake sector. But for pilots flying in and out, you would all you would call it the whole thing Potomac approach. But I uh, hope that you guys got a good taste of really how much there is for a controller to process when you're checking onto a frequency. And if the controller's uh, not 100% attentive to you, or if you think that they're rushing and they're not really paying attention and they're just spitting out commands as fast as possible, maybe you have a, uh, maybe you have a sense as to why that is. I'm going to scroll back. Now, you guys were really respectful in the chat as far as like understanding that I'm not going to be too interactive. I know there was a little bit of talking back and forth amongst yourselves, which is fantastic. I had no problem with that. Uh, but I appreciate that uh, most of you caught on that I was not going to be able to respond to most of what you said. But I will scroll back. So we had Krypton One X-Ray that stopped in very early on and said he loved this. And so if you're still here, thank you very much. We did have uh, what do we have? A few new follows. Well, we had Agent Bravo 7 stop in and resubscribe. Look at Mr. I'll never go above tower, she says. Yeah, no, I know. There was a lot of arm twisting involved in this, uh, Agent Bravo 7. So um, we'll see. We'll see how far this goes. Uh, we got Bry CDN with the follow about an hour ago, and the blob followed as well. Followed Bry with the follow. Follow. There was a follow that followed a follow. So thank you guys both for that. And then it was, uh, it's no Braden. It's not Braden with the follow about a half an hour ago. So thank you for the new followers. Uh, what you uh, what you saw tonight is not something that is normally streamed. It is uh, that sim air traffic control training. As, and as you picked up, it is a very, very intense and interactive process just between the student and the instructors. So again, interacting with the chat on top of that, really just not possible, but I hope that you guys did enjoy and did, like I said, get an appreciation for what VATSIM controllers go through. I'm just scratching the surface here. I'm going to be totally honest with you guys. There's a ton more to what goes on than what you saw tonight. I was just, I was struggling with the basics. There is all kinds of additional stuff, like as they mentioned toward the end, landing and departing from some of these satellite airfields that we didn't even touch tonight. There's a whole lot more that goes on with folks that are not on a standard arrival or a standard departure. We saw a little bit of that tonight, but not a lot. Yeah, lots, lots more to go on. Uh, let's come back into the chat. Who else do I need to say hi to? Of course, Good, good Fixins was here. I appreciate your... Uh, Time. Kitty Monster stopped in. Bry CDN said, uh, I watch guys do ATC all the time, but getting to sit in and actually learn what they're thinking when they make the decisions is really awesome. And I love the stream idea. Bry, thank you so much. Yeah, it was a, it was a big to-do over whether or not I should stream this. And uh, a matter of fact, we had extensive discussions with the... Uh, the, the the staff at Washington ARTCC. What you, who you were hearing was Jared West. The deeper voice was Jared West. Uh, he's the air traffic manager. John Bartlett. The the uh, uh, the other voice was the was at the time the training administrator. He's now since uh, accepted a promotion to deputy air traffic manager. And I think probably two weeks from tonight, I think our our training our new training administration uh, administrator Dylan might be involved. But um, but we we talked extensively over what pieces of the training process could be streamed and what tr pieces of the training process shouldn't be streamed. And I think we were all on kind of the same page that this would be a really great opportunity for what I've been calling the inside baseball look at that same air traffic control. And uh, and as Bryce said, yeah, getting a sense of what the controllers thought process is as each new plane checks on. Uh, Kenny Monster checked in. Thank you very much, Kenny Monster. Good to see you here. Good Fixins was the one that was like, yeah, this file is, is full of gotchas. Yeah, they did. They set this up, as they said, they set this up on purpose to get you thinking ahead about, all right, what am I going to need to do to mitigate the situation? The, the chessboard is set up and there's some threats and I've got to go ahead and start getting those sorted out. So that it's a very good lesson from that that, uh, that kind of standpoint. Iowa Scotsman checked in. Good to see you as always. Cutlass. 
um, was asking about, is there a way to see what happens in the background uh, at Boston and, uh, and the radars that some of, uh, some of what I used to do with Flight Sin 9? Indeed. Nomadic Lander stopped back in as well. Good to see, uh, good, considering everything that goes into it, I think he did great, and uh, good to see you working at it. Yeah, I'm still at the very, very beginning stages, Cutlass, so uh, I'm, I'm, not, uh, I'm not trying to be hard on myself. I'm just trying to be honest that there were definitely some things that I've, I, I've, I caught on with okay. John was saying that, hey, I had a pretty good scan. I could, I could start to see some conflicts ahead of time, but I felt like I was very behind each of the airplanes again, not thinking very much ahead about next steps. I was just reacting every time someone called up. I was like, oh, what do I need to be doing with them? So again, got to be got to be uh, ahead um, and rather rather than reacting. Automator stopped in, said hi. It is interesting just to know how much there is to pay attention to. Yeah, indeed. And, and the guys who do it fluidly without even thinking about it, the guys like Sheed, the guys like Clear Approach, of course, Clear Approach does it for a living as well. The guys who can rattle the stuff off reflexively without even really have to th having to think about it and then can entertain their stream chats with hellos and follows and prizes and giveaways and whatever else they're doing to pour their stream audience uh, while this is all going on, that's just um, I'm, uh, that's that's the the big huge exploding brain that I'm still with the very tiny brain. If you know the meme I'm talking about, center next after this says Kenny Monster. Yeah, and a long way off, Kenny Monster, a long way off. And and first of all, if I ever, second of all, um, just to give you a sense of the training process here at, at at ZDC. So this is the sector that surrounds BWI. There's two other sectors here in the northern part of the uh, Potomac Tracon, which of course would be uh, Mount Vernon sector, which surrounds DCA, and Shenandoah sector, which surrounds Dulles. And then, in fact, Potomac also includes what they call the James River sector, which surrounds Richmond. Even though that seems like it's way down to the south, it is still part of the, con the consolidated Tracon, so it is still part of Potomac. So before you do Potomac combined, you actually have to train on all four of those sections. Uh, Chesapeake, then Shenandoah, then Mount Vernon, then James River, and then, you know, kind of combine them. And again, learning how to handle all the traffic in and out of all the satellite airports in that vicinity as well. Make sure you're prepared for a T-38 Talon to come in on the Ripken 2, uh, your first night of controlling. That thing is hard. Uh, we're kidding much of the Ripken 2 no longer exists. Um, Ripken and Raven were kind of... Uh, Ripken was the was the conventional nav procedure. Raven is the RNAV procedure, but they both follow essentially the same path. But they've officially taken Ripken off the books, as far as the uh, as far as the the current procedural arrivals into into Baltimore. Yeah, the Ripken Ripken arrival no longer on the books. Yep. All right, guys. Well, as I alluded to, we are preparing for our next stream for you on Friday. I did adjust the published show schedule this morning, so. Uh, or yesterday or sometime recently, I did adjust that published show schedule. We are officially going to uh, debut on this stream, at least the PMDG 737 for you on Friday. I'm going to spend the rest of this evening finishing my control configuration. Uh, I, I could not find back in my uh, archived files my old 737 checklists. So what I'm doing is I'm going through my 757 checklists and and uh, kind of ca cannibalizing. And, and when I say checklists, it's really more the, the procedural flow lists. You know, you guys know the list of steps that I keep off, off screen when I fly. So I'm really going through my 757 um, and, uh, and cannibalizing that list and turning it back into a 737 uh, flow list. I, I have extensive amount of time in the, the PMDG 737 for FSX, but of course that's all about probably uh, four or five years old at this point, or at least four years old. And uh, so it's, it's kind of relearning some things. And of course, you know, I don't do a whole lot of modern airliner flying on this stream for you anyway. So that's already a rusty skill set. But then the 737, I think it'll come back to me after a couple flights. Again, the plan on Friday is to do one test flight off stream just to make sure. Excuse me. Just to make sure that um, that it does indeed uh, behave the way I expect it to. By all accounts, it does indeed uh, function pretty well. Like when you 
change routes in the FMC and everything else that you do. Uh, it does react as intended. So I think it's going to uh, probably go pretty well, but we'll do one off stream flight or off, off that sim flight rather on Friday's stream just to make sure all the kinks are worked out and I can get the plane from A to B uh, without hurting anybody. That will be the uh, that'll be the plan, and then we'll jump onto that sim for the second hop, and where wherever that happens to be, wherever we happen to have that sim air traffic control. The 737's modern, modern says Automator. Well, it's modern in comparison to the other aircraft that typically fly on this stream for you. So yes, by by my definition of modern, yes. Frosty FSP says I just. Just came in via, I'm assuming that was, yeah, I'm not Indonesian. I'm assuming that was supposed to have said something along the lines of, I just came in via the Raven 6 to BWI. Yeah, the Raven 6 is there, the Ripken, I forget what revision the Ripken uh, was on, but that's kind of, it's, it's deprecated at this point. So uh, the Raven 6, I love the Raven 6 because you come along, and I forget the name of the fix, but you come along and you're kind of descending gently, and then you hit the one fix and it's just like, it's the slam dunk. Um, and in fact, the old PMDG 737 used to tell me no, um, no, no descent path after blank. And I forget what the name of the fix was, but, uh, it was just, it was just, you just plummet and you just have to pull the spoiler, spoilers out get the thing down there and then re-engage VNAV once it got its bearings back because it would, it would just decide that that descent was too steep. It just kind of hits you all at once. So that's a good one. That's a fun one to fly. We did, we've done that in the working title CJ4 mod, and it's kind of the same thing. It just like it gets to there, and all of a sudden, the rug comes out from under you, and you're, uh, you're dropping like a rock toward Baltimore. Of course, it's done that way on purpose, so you have to come over some of this airspace down here um, to stay out of the way of, of DCA and Andrews, and then you end up kind of coming into Raven from the, the, the southwest and then making a 90 degree left into well, you normally Baltimore lands on 3 3, so you join this localizer down here off of Raven and come in that way. Yeah, it gets to 20 from 23 to 6 pretty fast. Yeah, it's a fun one. The DC 6 has a nice sound, says Nomadic. I love those streams. Yeah, those are nice. That's a nice, relaxing sound. Those four giant radials kind of operating in sync. And uh, just putting you to sleep as you fly, and it's a nice, it's a beautiful, uh, it's a beautiful sound. It's the, it reminds me of the sound from airplane, the the, the per droning propeller sound that was jokingly added over top of the exterior shots in the movie Airplane. All right, guys. Well, anyway, back to working on what I was working on for Friday. So we will get ready to do a couple of hops in that brand new 737 on Friday. So that is what I will spend the rest of this evening on. It's been a, a little bit of a shorter stream for you tonight, but it, it was a pretty intense and fun one. Hopefully you guys, like I said, most of you seem to like uh, really catch on to what was going on and really enjoy it. So uh, glad that that is the case. We will do this again two weeks from tonight on the 25th as I join uh, another night of uh, that sim air traffic control training with the uh, instructor team here at the Washington ARTCC. So Friday, it's the 737. Monday, then the 16th, get back to our river run in the JP Logistics mod of the Cessna 152 as we continue through our trek along the Columbia River up in the Pacific Northwest. And as a matter of fact, Monday the 16th is gonna be a really cool one because it's gonna be the part where we traverse the Portland class Charlie airspace as we follow that river. And we might, uh, I don't know if we're gonna work in a touch and go at uh, Portland or maybe we'll make a stop at Troutdale. I haven't quite exactly determined 100% what those stops are gonna be, but we'll maybe play it by ear. The full show schedule is down underneath the About tab, guys, if you want to see what's coming up on the uh, on the show. We've also got it published over on our Discord server. That link is on the bottom right-hand side of your screen, or at least it should be. Um, if there are any last-minute changes to the schedule, we publish that on our Discord. We also publish that on our Twitter. So if you want to check in on Twitter, that link is on the bottom center of the screen. I also try to keep you guys updated as to the major breaking news in the sim and... Uh, that sim worlds so you can follow us on twitter twitter.com slash slant alpha over on the left hand side of your screen is our that sim uh, i'm sorry our youtube channel on which there is a that sim tutorials playlist if you are 
considering getting onto the VATSIM network, but you're intimidated by what to say to controllers or how to put together routes or how to read sectionals, figure out what airspace is what. We've definitely got some a uh, good handful of tutorials over there for you to check out and give you some good information. We just added one to that list. We did our uh, first wings, our VATSIM first wings event this past Sunday which we spent the first half of that show just kind of going over some of that stuff in the VFR sectional lesson and looking at the Hawaiian Islands area, showing about uh, which airspace boundaries are where over in Hawaii. And then we did a VFR flight from Molokai out to Hilo. So the second part of the stream was kind of a demo flight, and we did a, we did a departure from a Delta, then we went to uh, uh, advisories, and then we traversed a Class Charlie VFR. We did a class Charlie transition west to east through uh, through Maui. So we talked about how to call up the controller to get that permission to enter that Charlie and just cross it west to east. And then we did our arrival at Hilo, which would have been on a Delta airport, but then wound up being on CTAF because our air traffic control took the night took the rest of the night off at that point. So we kind of had a little of everything. Really good demo flight, and like I said, we spent the first half of that stream just going over VFR sectionals and how to read airspace boundaries and such. Viper Strike stopped in and said hello as well, and I missed that earlier, and I apologize for that. But Viper Strike, good to see you back on the stream as well. Okay, I think that's going to do it for me. We talked about the Discord, we talked about the Twitter, we talked about the YouTube, we talked about what's coming up on the stream. If we're a general aviation stream, we typically fly for you Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 7 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time. We've got two ongoing raffles that run on this channel we've got the alphabets points raffle the one that you can enter by virtue of the channel points there at the bottom of the chat panel five thousand of those points redeemed at once gets you six entries into our monthly raffle if you uh cash them in one thousand at a time that's one entry you uh it's to your advantage to save up for the five thousand you get that six for the price of five but uh, the next drawing will be held on May the 27th, so you can strategize it however you choose to. Again, that's the Twitch channel points, alphabets points as we call them here, at the bottom of that chat panel and the little button next to the alphabet serial icon that gives you the options to redeem. 1,000 for one entry, 5,000 for six entries. The second raffle that we do on the channel is our landing rate raffle, so on the nights that we fly, which is most of them, we always get your predictions as to the descent rate upon touchdown and... Uh, Whoever gets closest gets an automatic entry into that second raffle. Both raffles will be pulled on the same night, which again will be May the 27th. Each winner gets their choice of any one item from this list, which is our Slant Alpha merch list. We call the Prize Vault. If you don't want any of my stuff, then uh, you're more than welcome to choose instead a $25 Amazon card or a $25 xplane.org store card. So uh, those are the ongoing raffles that we do all the time. In addition to that, we also have a uh, variety of different giveaways that we do on the stream, and the next one will be coming up at the end of June to beginning of July. The uh, stream turns four years old on July 1st, and so we'll officially do a little fourth anniversary celebration coming up there. We'll probably give away, you know, just recently we had our 2,500 followers celebration. We gave away $100 worth of gift cards to uh, four different folks. Um, and uh, so we'll probably do something again like that unless we come up with uh, some some additional interesting prize to uh, to throw into the mix there. We'll, we'll kind of kick that around. We've got a couple of months to, uh, to figure that out. But yeah, so the end of June, well, not even a couple of months, a month and a half to figure that out. So uh, so yeah, stream turns four in a month and a half. ELW says, nice. Frosty FS says, uh, good luck with the training. Yeah, thank you. I'm going to need it. <laughs> Especially if I can only do it every six to eight weeks, I'm really going to need it. All right, but thank you guys for stopping in and hope that you did enjoy the show and hope that we will see you again on Friday as we uh, take that PMDG DC6 for a couple hops. I'm going to send you over. Well, I'll tell you what. You know what's... We've got a couple of options here. Well, that one's two hours in and I'm not sure if they're doing another one. I'll tell you what. We are going to send you over since we have just enjoyed an evening of watching VATSIM air traffic control training. Let's send you to somebody who does it for real. Uh, he is a controller on the VATSIM network. He is working at uh, Atlanta right now. I can't see exactly which position he's controlling. Uh, it looks like he might be doing Atlanta ground or tower. I'm not sure. Yeah, it is Atlanta ground. Uh, but the, in addition to that, he is a real-world controller in the Fort Worth Center. 
So uh, he, like me, loves to teach, loves to explain what's going on as, as he does it. So it's a great resource as far as uh, you know, questions that you might have about how VATSIM works or how certain clearances works. Or again, like folks were saying earlier here on this channel, um, to get a sense of what the controller is thinking as certain scenarios play out in front. So uh, send us, we'll send you over to Cleared Approach. And again, VATSIM uh, air traffic controller working Atlanta ground at the moment. He usually, usually works Atlanta Center, uh, but, but it's a real world Fort Worth Center controller. So great resource for the VATSIM community. And I'm sure that you all will, uh, will uh, enjoy his channel. Please uh, send, um, Send him your slant off of love when you get over there. Is there an, an, an East Coast event tonight, asks Kenny Monster? I'm not even sure. Uh, VATSIM, or VATUSA.net, uh, Pilot Tools, and the VATUSA events calendar would be the place I would go to answer your question there. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and send you over to Mr. Clear Approach. And like I said, and please tell him that slant off sends his love when you get over there. I'm sure, like I said, you will enjoy his show. Tons of jets from Atlanta to LaGuardia, says EL. Nothing on the calendar, but it is staffed. Yeah, Atlanta is just one of those places that just gets crazy busy on a, on a total whim sometimes. But anyway, we'll send you over. He's uh, He's got quite a mess over there on Atlanta ground, you can see, when, once you get over there. So do enjoy, guys, and we will see you on Friday from the cockpit of that PMDG 737. Until then, have a great rest of your week, guys. Be healthy and safe in your own travels and your own adventures, and we will talk to you then.